Let's start. MTC. 2024 One Common Number. Let's check it out. Dear Parents. My name is Joanne Simmons. Joanne Simmons. I am the principal of Roots Middle School. Roots. I am writing you this letter regarding a teacher change in one of your child's classes. William Erickson, your child's current biology teacher, has to leave the school due to personal reasons, so he will be replaced by Tabitha Brown. William Erickson Tabitha Brown. Mrs. Brown will start teaching on November 6. Brown 116. She has a master's degree in science education, and she has been teaching for five years. 5. The current curriculum for the class will remain the same for the remainder of the semester, including the textbook, assignments, and exams. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, and if you have any concerns or questions, please contact the school administration office. Yours sincerely, Joanne Simmons Roots Middle School Principal. Roots Joanne Simmons. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 2024 One Common Number. 01. Dear Mr. Steve Jang. Steve Jang. I am deeply regretful to inform you of a decision our company has recently made. We have decided to accept your letter of resignation from the position of Chief Research Engineer. Your resignation letter, I dated September 15, 2023, has been reviewed and approved by the Board of Directors. 2023915. Hence, as requested, your final working day will be on October 14, 2023. 20231014. We are sad to see you leave but happy that you will be able to pursue better opportunities for yourself. We appreciate your positive attitude and hard work for the last six years. 6. We wish you all the best for your future success. Sincerely, Peter Simon Human Resources Manager Summit Electronics. Summit Electronics Peter Simon. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 2024 One Common Number 02 As soon as she landed at John F. Kennedy Airport, Christina felt her face wet with tears of emotion. John F. Kennedy, Christina. As if in a dream, she never wanted to wake up. From the inside of Ellen's car, Christina, Ellen's new babysitter, admired queens with sparkling eyes, amazed at everything she saw. Ellen Ellen Christina Queens The 40 minutes to Manhattan were the most incredible, from afar she could see the Statue of Liberty, her heart beating fast. Manhattan 4-0 When they passed Times Square, Christina asked Ellen if she could stop the car for a few minutes. Times Square, Christina Ellen. She got out of the car and took pictures with her tablet. Then they arrived at Ellen's house. Ellen. Christina, this is Carolyn, my dear baby. From now on you will take care of her. Christina, Carolyn. Dot. Such an adorable baby. Christina liked the baby and everything she saw. Christina. That night she barely slept a wink, looking forward to starting the next day. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 2024 One Common Number. 03. Dear Mr. Watson. Watson. Thank you for your thoughtful letter about the need for special training programs in organic chemistry for your company's employees. This is exactly the sort of role we seek as a community college, we want to provide a practical education that helps individuals enhance their careers within their company. After reviewing the details you provided, we concluded that we would be able to provide the programs you requested as long as your company can commit to enrolling 50 students per year for at least two years. 250. Through the programs we offer, your company employees will be able to enhance the necessary knowledge and skills. Please give me a call at your best convenience to discuss this proposal in more detail. Sincerely, Charles J. Thompson Director of Course Design and Development. Charles J. Thompson. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 2024 One Common Number. 04. Leo stopped and looked around the forest. Leo. He had been hiking through the forest for five hours by that point, he was dizzy and hungry but he didn't stop. I've got to find him no matter what, Leo said to himself. Dot Leo. He was solely focused on finding his lost dog, Boxer. Boxer. To him, nothing mattered more. Leo started hurrying as he was almost at the top of a nearby hill. Leo. When he crossed a wooden bridge over a creek, 
he finally heard the familiar barking of Boxer. Boxer. He might be around here, somewhere, Leo mumbled. Dot. Leo. His spirits rose. Leo ran towards where the sound came from, and there he found Boxer, hiding in the bushes. Leo, Boxer. There you are, Boxer. Said Leo. Boxer. Leo. The dog was safe and unharmed. He barked and wagged his tail as he looked at Leo. Leo. MTC. Good job. 2024 Chapter 2. Comma Number. Let's check it out. Many people think that good writing flows out of the brain, into the fingers, and onto the page or screen. Nothing could be further from the truth. Professional writers know that writing, like any acquired skill, requires patience and persistence. Whatever we are composing, whether an email message or a proposal for a new business, the key to writing well is to consider writing a process rather than a one-shot deal. Your prose will be better and will take you less time to compose if you look at writing as a series of tasks. For those who suffer from writer's block or who shudder at the thought of writing, I can promise that if you break down writing into several component parts, the result will be better and you will feel less anxious. 2024 Chapter 2 Common Number 1. There is a risk in sharing your innermost thoughts and feelings with other people. What if they should misunderstand, or scorn you or heaven forbid laugh at you? T.S. Eliot's Prufuk dreads to speak to a woman of love, do I dare? He asks himself, do I dare? T.S. Elio Prufrock? What if he were to read love in a woman's behavior and she should respond, that is not what I meant at all, that is not it, at all. Dot. What loss of face and embarrassment. But isn't there a bigger risk in losing out on real connection and closeness with others through closing of your feelings? The great thing about conversation is that you can go step by step, testing the waters as you go a small feeling statement here, a minor revelation there, and carry on only as trust builds between you. There is nothing more powerful than emotional truth in building connection, and people are most influenced through feelings. When we hide emotion, we hide access to this influence. We talk about telling the truth, but emotional truth is more profound and more powerful than factual truth. 2024 Chapter 2 Common Number 2 A major drawback of oral communication is that it cannot be erased. There is a sense of finality concerning the spoken word. Any word uttered by the speaker travels swiftly and reaches the target. Any slip of the tongue can create an embarrassment and an unintended hurt. The moment a wrong or unintended word is delivered, the damage is done. Effective speakers are acutely conscious of this factor. More so, when they make extempore speeches. Recognizing this limitation, while resorting to any form of oral communication, one should learn to make a careful choice of words. Until the fine art of speaking with restraint is developed, it would be desirable to make the speeches and interventions, structured and well thought out rather than spontaneous and extempore. Whenever the oral communication is intended to achieve an important objective, extra care should be taken with the choice of words. 2024 Chapter 2 Common Number 3 Taking pictures has become much easier, and as a result people post millions of selfies on social media sites daily. Just about everyone with a smartphone has an album full of personal photos. Snapping a selfie may seem like a nice way to capture a memory, but it actually has a major impact on self-esteem. When you take a selfie, you can't help but evaluate your appearance and compare to others. Unlike prior eras when you had to wait for a photo to be printed, now you instantly view the result. You scrutinize your posture, your hair, your clothing, and your makeup. Your flaws are all too clear. With imaging software at our fingertips, any picture can be altered and refined for online sharing. As your inner critic takes center stage, selfies become the modem day acts, chopping down our inner joy. The more time we spend on social media, the more demanding standards become and the more susceptible we become to trolls who heartlessly magnify imperfections out of all proportion. 2024 Chapter 2 Common Number 4 The world is a field of the contest of values. We can hardly deny that, even if we suppose that some marine snails are bad snails killing fish, or that pest insects come along, eat plant leaves, and capture the stored energy that plants would have otherwise used to preserve their own good kinds. When we recognize how the ecosystem is a permanent contest of goods in dialectic and exchange, it will become difficult to say that all or even any of the organisms in it are bad kinds, ill-situated in their niches. 
the misfits are extinct, or soon will be. Rather it seems that many of them, maybe even all of them, will have to be respected for the skills and achievements by which they survive over the millennia. At least we will have to recognize the possibility of intrinsic value in nature, and it will seem arrogant to retreat into a human-centered environmental ethics. 2024 Chapter 3. Number. Let's check it out. A good way of thinking about theory is to consider theory as a lens. For example, when you go to the eye doctor for a new set of eyeglasses, the doctor asks you to look at a collection of letters through samples of different lenses. Each lens provides you with a different view some lenses make the letters clear and organized, whereas others leave them fuzzy and distorted. Just as each lens dramatically shapes the way that you see the same view, each theory shapes the way that you interpret the world. Not all theories are successful in helping you see a social phenomenon more clearly. Indeed, some theories that aim to simplify complex information can end up making it more complicated. However, sometimes the right theory can help you see information in an entirely new light, just as the correct lens allows you to see with precise detail. In this way, theories are tools we can use for critical and contextual analysis. 2024 Chapter 3. Number 1. Although contemporary culture prescribes sitting still while thinking, a stroll through the history of literature and philosophy finds abundant evidence of a counter-message. Take Friedrich Nietzsche, for instance. Friedrich Nietzsche. Only thoughts which come from walking have any value, he maintained. Dot. Soren Kierkegaard felt similarly. Soren Kierkegaard. I have walked myself into my best thoughts, remarked the Danish philosopher. Dot. Walking is gymnastics for the mind, observed the American writer Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson. I am unable to reflect when I am not walking, the moment I stop, I think no more, and as soon as I am again in motion, my head resumes its workings, added the Swiss-born philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Dot. Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The French philosopher and essayist Michel de Montaigne regretted that his thoughts often came to him when he was on the move, at moments when I have nothing to jot them down on. This often happened especially on my horse, the seat of my widest musings. Michel de Montaigne 2024 Chapter 3 Number 2 Social scientists, without using the term, have been squinting at whether our species has an objective function for more than a century. Kahneman and Tversky and Thaler and Banaji and all of them have looked at the fundamental programming that makes us who we are, and for the adjustments that can be made to make us better. Kahneman Tversky Thaler Banaji. But increasingly, a new crop of social and political scientists are beginning to step back from the problem and ask whether in some cases or even most cases there's any universal notion of better we could ever agree on. They're pointing out that better for you or me could be in fact far worse for someone else in other circumstances. And what they're pursuing suggests that not only isn't there a sea across which we're trying to point a ship, or a destination to which we can navigate, but also that it's in fact dangerous to build an automated system that measures success against a universal medium, in service of a universal goal. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 3 A new level of hate speech laws was reached in 2017 in Germany, when a bill was passed by the German Bundestag which specifically criminalizes hate speech on social media. 2017 the law also insists that social network may be fined very large sums of up to 50 million euro in case they do not actively seek and successfully remove certain content within a week. 5,000. The passing of this law was controversial, with a number of German, but also many international commentators, stating that such a law is very far-reaching and will have a number of non-intended and counterproductive consequences. Since then, social networks have taken many efforts to comply with this new law. And while they have certainly succeeded in removing quite a lot of illegal content, there have also been many issues with content being removed either by accident or due to over-interpretation of certain statements. Appeal of removal decisions is also important and social networks are starting to implement this. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 4 Emotions such as anger can promote cooperation because they motivate actors to inflict costs on selfish individuals. However, Inflicting costs on individuals who are not selfish is harmful to both the establishment and the maintenance of cooperation, whether such actions constitute intentional exploitation or accidental harm. Interestingly, such behavior can evoke a distinct emotion, although guilt can be elicited by a variety of events, the central elicitor is the infliction of harm on another, whether intentional or unintentional, 
prototypically within a communal relationship characterized by expectations of mutual concern. Deliberate defection or careless mistakes can elicit guilt, just as initial gratitude can turn into guilt when failure to reciprocate becomes perceived as defection. Guilt focuses attention on the action and the harm that has been done to the other party, inflicts subjective discomfort on the actor via its strongly aversive valence, and motivates the actor to make up by aiding or otherwise compensating the victim. The functioning of guilt is thus precisely turned to identify and reverse the damage done to a cooperative relationship. 2024 Chapter 2024 Chapter 4 Number Let's check it out. Talking is one of the ways in which we rise above food, we are not at table merely to eat, but in order to enjoy each other's company. It isn't so much what's on the table that matters, said W.S. Gilbert, as what's on the chairs. W.S. Gilbert, dot. The ancient Greeks never tired of repeating that stomach, gaster, was not enough, one needed mind, psyche, as well, that civilized people came together for each other and for philosophy, and not just to stuff themselves. A philosopher host like Mendemus would provide a meal for only one or two of his guests. Mendemus. The others would have to dine before coming, bring their own cushions, and be content with a sip for everybody from one half pint cup and nothing but a lupin or a bean for dessert. He offered a token dinner but made it impossible for most guests to come to the party for anything but the conversation. 2024 Chapter 4 Number 1 Perhaps the most widely recognized meaning of souvenirs for tourists is that they make intangible experiences tangible. Souvenirs' physical existence assists in defining, freezing in time, and locating an ephemeral experience in extraordinary time in ordinary time and space. When tourists bring something home from the extraordinary place, the destination, Home can become, in some small part at least, a part of the extraordinary, and experiences can be relived in routine time and space, a memorial function is, thus, created. Tourists cannot hold on to the non-ordinary experience, for it is, by nature, ephemeral but they can hold on to a tangible piece of it, an object that came from it, for Western culture tends to define reality as that which you can put your hands on. 2024 Chapter 4 Number 2. If you cannot retrieve a fact or idea, stay with it until the memory appears. Don't give up assuming it's lost. When a memory doesn't surface the moment we want, the default response is to assume it is forgotten. You likely didn't forget. You just need to give the brain a moment to shuffle through the mental forest. The key is not to force the memory, but instead, to relax and let it come. If you are stuck for an extended period, try recalling anything. Then use the power of association to steer toward the information. For example, if you are struggling to recall the earlier chapter of a book, start with middle or later chapters, or any part that comes easy. For instance, you might think about an interaction between several characters in chapter 7, then realize one of them was introduced in chapter 3. 7, 3. That will trigger memories of other parts of chapter 3. 3. You can use these memories to guild recollection of chapters 1, 2, or even 4. 1, 2, 4. 2024 Chapter 4. Number 3. In the past decade, artificial intelligence, AL, technologies have accomplished several breakthroughs in solving complex tasks, most notably in computer vision and the development of autonomous agents. 1, 0, AL. These achievements are driven mainly by advances in machine learning and deep learning and the availability of large computing power and extensive databases. Currently, modern AI techniques are starting to find their way into several aspects of mathematical work and mathematics education. AI In interactive learning environments, for instance, AI can be used to extract mathematical knowledge from the real world to generate new methods of content creation. AI On a more abstract level, AI is a promising technology for automated learner modeling motivated by results from current research in AI for abstract mathematical reasoning. AI, AI. These technologies are, furthermore, expected to contribute to more intelligent tutoring systems, as employed in online learning environments, which, at present, already use data mining techniques to extract quantifiable insights from the learner's actions. 2024 Chapter 4 Number 4 We are all well acquainted with ignorance, it is our native state. We begin our lives in ignorance and in need. Human beings are, to a dramatic extent when compared with other creatures, born in an unfinished condition, 
incapable even of survival without a long period of nurturance under the protective guidance of elders. As Rousseau declared, we are born weak, we need strength, we are born entirely destitute, we need help, we are born stupid, we need understanding. Rousseau. All that we lack at birth and need in maturity is given us by education. Dot. Fortunately, we are also uncommonly keen learners. Through the processes of human development, socialization, and education, we rapidly discover and construct the world in which we live and move and have our being. The obligation to learn is primal, not only to thrive, but simply to survive, we must escape the profound ignorance that shrouds us at our birth. No wonder we fear ignorance. 2024 Chapter 6. Number. Let's check it out. An architect, sculptor, and architectural historian, Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach, was born in Graz, Austria, in July 1656. Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach 16567 Graz. He left Graz to study in Rome in the early 1670s and had the good fortune to enter the studio of the great Baroque sculptor and architect Gian Lorenzo Bernini. 1670 Graz Gian Lorenzo Bernini. He quickly gained a reputation as a gifted architect, which earned him commissions from Austrian aristocracy and also caught the attention of the Holy Roman Emperor Joseph I and the Church. Joseph I. Requested everywhere, he divided his time between Vienna, Salzburg, and Prague, before permanently settling in Vienna in 1686. 1686 Vienna Vienna, Salzburg, Prague. He was ennobled by the Emperor Leopold, who appointed him royal engineer and added the aristocratic von Erlach to his name. Leopold, von Erlach, Erlach. He designed the magnificent Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna, the Versailles of the Habsburgs. Vienna Schönbrunn. 2024 Chapter 6. Number 1. The American Dipper is a small gray bird with a short tail that closely resembles a wren. It is found mostly in the western United States between the Pacific coast and the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains. This small bird has narrow white feathers on both the upper and lower eyelids that create a white flash as the bird blinks. It has a habit of moving its tail up and down continuously as it sits on rocks near the water. The American Dipper feeds on aquatic insects that it catches from stream bottoms. It walks and flies in and out of the swift current, and it appears to walk along the bottoms of fast-moving streams as it searches for food. The American Dipper nests in protected areas along stream banks. The nests are insulated with dry moss, and the females lay three to six eggs. Young American Dippers are able to dive for food even before they learn how to fly. 2024 Chapter 6 Number 2 Constantine Kefafi is regarded as one of the most influential Greek poets of the 20th century. Constantine Kefafi 2-0 Born in 1863 in Alexandria, Egypt, to Greek parents, Kavafi spent part of his youth in England, where his family had business connections. 1863 Alexandria Kavafi. He loved English and French literature, and generally spoke English, even his Greek had a British accent. After returning to live in Alexandria in 1885, Kavafi stayed there for the rest of his life. 1885 Alexandria, Kavafi. Working as a civil servant for 30 years, he wrote poetry in his spare time. 3-0. Kavafi consistently refused to formally publish his work and preferred to share it through local newspapers. Kavafi. Kavafi found his own style around the age of 40, eventually producing some 150 short poems that he considered acceptable. Kavafi 4-0-150. Many of his poems are set in ancient Greece and Rome, such as the celebrated Waiting for the Barbarians. Waiting for the Barbarians. With great subtlety, he makes the ancient world reflect upon the present. 2024 Chapter 6 Number 3 Nancy Roman was born in Nashville on May 16, 1925. Nancy Roman 1925516 Nashville When Roman was 11, she showed an interest in astronomy by forming an astronomy club with her classmates in Nevada. Roman 11, Nevada Though she knew she wanted to be an astronomer by the time she entered high school, she had to fight prejudice to be allowed to study maths and science at school and university. After receiving a doctorate in astronomy from the University of Chicago, Roman joined NASA in 1959, just six months after the agency had been established. Roman NASA 61959 NASA When she arrived at NASA, astronomers could obtain data from balloons, sounding rockets, and airplanes. 
NASA. Roman, however, thought that to see the universe through more powerful eyes, NASA would have to send telescopes to space. Roman NASA Through Roman's leadership, NASA launched four satellites for the purpose of conducting astronomical observations between 1966 and 1972. Roman, NASA 1966-1972 Roman tirelessly advocated for new tools that would allow scientists to study the broader universe from space. Roman She died in 2018 and is still celebrated as a driving force behind advances, including the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope. 2018, Hubble 2024 Chapter 6 Number 4 The Northern Mockingbird is a rather plain-looking bird with brownish-gray upper parts and blackish tail and wings. The underparts of its body are light gray and it has yellow eyes. In flight, there is a noticeable white patch on the wing. As its name implies, the Northern Mockingbird imitates other birds' songs. Its singing usually consists of a mixture of its own songs with those of other birds, phrases are repeated several times. Their memory of borrowed songs is impressive, and they are able to reproduce songs eight months after exposure to them. 8. This species is highly territorial. There are reports of dogs and cats being chased off from breeding territories by this bird. In summer, this species' diet consists primarily of insects, but it also includes snails, small vertebrates, and berries. In winter, however, vegetable matter makes up a large proportion of the diet. 2024 Chapter 8. Number. Let's check it out. Code plays an important role in baseball and softball. During a game, players and coaches can be seen exchanging sequences of hand gestures that involve touches to their arms, head and apparel. The most important messages are those exchanged between the catcher and the pitcher about the type of pitch that will be thrown. In light of the potential usefulness of this message to the opposing team, it is not surprising that there is a long history of so-called sign stealing. When successful, this allows the player at second base who is able to monitor the exchanges between the catcher and pitcher to warn the batter about the pitch that they are likely to receive. 2. This is not without controversy though, and in 2018, there were particularly heated accusations around Boston Red Sox's use of electronic equipment to steal signs. 2018 Boston Red Sox To counter the possibility that opponents have cracked their code, Teams will sometimes also change their code throughout the season although this runs the risk that players may struggle to remember, and thus effectively use, the evolving code. 2024 Chapter 8 Number 1 According to Dunbar, human societies that reached around 150 people in a group were unable to achieve cohesion through similar activities to those of monkeys. Dunbar, 150 The reason that our ancestors lived in large groups, despite the potential for difficulties inherent in such groups, is that they faced a growing danger of predators waiting around them as they left the African forests for the grasslands of the savanna. Dunbar suggests that in this situation, language took the place of mutual care and cleaning. Dunbar In many studies, Dunbar and his colleagues show that people use language not just to provide useful information, but also and even primarily, for social exchanges. Dunbar the findings of Dunbar and his colleagues indicate that much of people's speech is devoted to gossip. Dunbar The researchers argue that gossip is a substitute for or equivalent to delousing in monkeys. Using the language of words, we can reach more people, talk simultaneously with more than one person, and convey information about cheaters and swindlers, or tell stories about upstanding, trustworthy people and all this in an efficient, concise manner that the language of words can do so well. 2024 Chapter 8. Number. 2. The rough edge between people is where the spark is. There is always turbulence in a relationship, and that turbulence gives both fiends a chance to grow emotionally. That is one of the most important things about friendships, you get to learn about how someone else sees the world and realize that they see it differently than you do. If the relationship has trust and affection, the hostility that inevitably comes up between two people is contained, so the aggression is overcome and the fiends work together to grow and learn something new. Having fiends that are a lot like you decreases the amount that you can learn from the other person. So, it is okay to have fiends that mirror you, being like you, but if you want to grow and learn, it is good to have fiends that are different. So, transformation and growth involve turbulence, difference, and a lot of learning, all the while keeping a connection healthy. These are the things that make a friendship special and important. 2024 Chapter 8 Number 
3. Our sphere of ethical concern is typically limited to those sentient animals whose welfare we affect by our interactions with them so that unconstrained wild animals might be excluded. Of course, like domesticated animals, wild animals can obviously also experience suffering and positive states, and are similarly individual, emotional beings. However, if in their natural state they contrive somehow to never encounter human beings or our influence upon their environments, these internal states remain entirely the concern of those animals and other non-human animals that they encounter. Domesticated animals have entered into a union with the human species. However, as we humans became a dominant superpower species we not only began to have increasingly negative impacts on wild species whose environments we have appropriated, but we also engaged in more uneven and exploitative relationships with domesticated animals which no longer have the option of defection or independence. 2024 Chapter 8 Number 4. To understand traditional or ethnic music as a collective symbol of pride does not mean that we share a crystallized perspective of music. Music deals with meanings and these are inevitably negotiated depending on contexts, that is, the meaning of certain genres or musical tracks varies in time and space, depending on the way it is appropriated by people. This means that the understandings on certain musical productions vary not only depending on the context but also on the characteristics of the artist or the audience. This situation is even more complex when it comes to contexts where the market and the cultural industries play a key role in the music's production, broadcasting and consumption circuits. The music industry and the media are crucial actors for the dissemination of musical tracks but also for the creation of meaning around them. Thus, the creation of certain musical categories and their expression in the public sphere are dependent on a number of social actors. 2024 Chapter 9 Number Let's check it out. Although it may seem like common sense to anyone who has ever learned something new or developed a skill, the idea that the brain can change has become fashionable in recent years. Neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and reorganize throughout the life of an individual. The ability to adapt to changing conditions has always been crucial to our survival, so this capacity has been hardwired into the mind of all higher life forms. You can build new neural pathways, and reinforce or diminish old ones through learning, conditioning, and practice. In fact, it would be impossible to prevent the modification of your mind. Everything you do or experience alters your mind. Even sharing pictures of your food is a form of practice that will strengthen the connections between certain neurons at the expense of others. Multilinguists, professional musicians, and academics with encyclopedic knowledge are living proof of the incredible human capacity for neuroplasticity. 2024 Chapter 9 Number 1 the artificial light at night prolongs the day. Urban songbirds singing in the morning start singing earlier than songbirds of the same species in forest areas. Davide Dominoni and his team of international scientists and researchers were able to determine a difference of 17 to 29 minutes. Davide Dominoni 17 to 9. The exact effects of this behavior are still relatively unknown at the present time. On the one hand, observations made by the Max Planck Institute suggest that by prolonging the day and singing early, the chance of mating and the time frame to go looking for food are increased, on the other hand there is speculation that the danger of becoming prey also increases accordingly. Max Planck Institute In addition, prolonged daily activities can have a negative effect on the bird's physical condition and thus also on the quality of the singing. As a result, the search for a reproductive partner becomes more difficult due to a lack of vocal attractiveness, i.e. weakened bird song. 2024 Chapter 9 Number 2. Fans have become accustomed to the violence, the injuries, and the pain. In some sports it can be easy to forget that there is a person inside the helmet. When you can't see their face, it's easier to ignore that the pain and damage is being inflicted on another human being for the sake of entertainment. Researchers at Auburn University conducted MRIs on football fans and non-fans. Auburn MRI They showed each participant violent images of football collisions and violent images unrelated to football. The non-fans reacted the same way to the violent images no matter what the source of the violence was. The football fans had a different reaction. Areas of the brain involved in empathy and the perception of pain were activated in their brains when they saw the violent images unrelated to football, but those regions were not activated when they saw violent football images. The fans may have been desensitized to the violence when it was in the football setting. These findings would likely apply to other sports too. 2024 Chapter 9 Number 3. Although communicative interaction is the pure essence of negotiation, 
there is nevertheless a genuine lack of studies that address the discursive and interactional nature of the phenomenon, let alone reproduce and examine transcripts of recordings of negotiation. In addition, remarkably few studies have hitherto been based on real-life instances of negotiation, studies of simulated encounters predominate. In the majority of existing research, language has been ignored, or degraded to the status of a manipulable independent variable, equivalent with, though no more significant than, variables such as the negotiator's behavioral disposition, negotiating tactics, and the disclosure of specific types of information. Where language is made the object of attention, it is most frequently subjected to the dictates and restrictions of categorization and statistical analyses via inductive coding schemes, where many of the interactional and contextual features of negotiation activity are lost. This has resulted in an impoverished view of negotiation as a cultural and interactional phenomenon. 2024 Chapter 9 Number 4 In the 1970 article The Uncanny Valley, Masahiro Mori made the case that human beings themselves lie at the final goal of robotics. 1970, The Uncanny Valley, Masahiro Mori. Mori argues that up to a point, as robots appear more human-like in movement and physical form, human responsiveness to and empathy for the machine increases. Mori. However, at a certain point, the positive responsiveness turns to revulsion, the valley. Mori uses the example of the artificial hand designed to look like it has veins, muscles, and fingerprints to describe this valley, this kind of artificial hand is too real, and when we notice it is artificial, there is a sense of strangeness. Mori, dot. This is a negative familiarity. Mori's thesis is that as robots are designed to look and move like human beings, the closer the resemblance, the higher the peaks and valleys of the uncanny, that is, the greater the resemblance to humanity, the greater the risk of a deep revulsion toward the machine on the part of the human. Mori. Dot. Thus, he urges designs that offer a sense of familiarity but that nonetheless preserve a perceptible difference from the human. 2024 Chapter 1 0 1 Number Let's check it out. The musical world is a blooming, buzzing confusion of sounds. The music on your phone may carry different harmonies, scales, and rhythms from the gamelans of Bali or the chants of the Brazilian rainforest. As the linguist Noam Chomsky taught us, we find universality not on the surface of spoken utterances but in the deep mental structures that generate them in the rules of the game. Noam Chomsky It is the same with music. People across the planet may speak different musical languages. However, the musical mind displays surprising consistency. Nearly everyone in the world can follow a rhythmic pattern, clap, or dance in time, sing a song, however accurately or inaccurately, remember a melody, and identify an emotion associated with some music they like. 2024 Chapter 1 0 1 Number 1 Objectivity is always someone's position, situated somewhere, and making some assumptions. There is no such thing as the view form nowhere. But there is such a thing as view derived from considering as many positions as possible. We must not forget that scientists like philosopher are human beings, with personalities, temperaments, and experiences of life, all of which they do not hang up in the locker room when they put on their white coats. Although objectivity, in the sense of a fair consideration of all possibilities, is an honorable and necessary aim, objectivity in the sense of adopting a viewpoint that makes no presuppositions is intrinsically impossible to achieve. We all, Scientists and non-scientists, live on some inclined plane of credulity, wrote William James. William James. Dot. The plane tips one way in one man, another way in another, and may he whose plane tips in no way be the first to cast a stone. Dot. 2024 Chapter 1 0 1 Number 2 The essential feature of exchange transactions in village markets, or any transaction between two individuals, for that matter, was that both buyer and seller expected to be better off after the exchange. To clarify this point, consider the purchase of a loaf of bread. The baker has more bread than he can eat, whereas with the money he gets for the sale, he can buy flour for the next day and have something left over, profit, that can be spent on dinner. The customer wants the bread for her family's dinner, more than she wants to keep the money for a future rainy day. So both parties consider themselves better off after the exchange, at the agreed price, than before. Otherwise, no such exchange would occur. Dot. Hence the very existence of trade meant that the people engaging in it were better off than they would have otherwise. On average, they would all become gradually more prosperous, although some faster than others. 
2024 Chapter 101. Number 3. The use of figurative language does not mean that poems are only fanciful of subjective in their meaning, much less fictional. Metaphors are ways of speaking about truth. In fact, all language, not only that of poetry, is metaphorical. Consider a prosaic statement such as the following, many people have bouts of depression, but when they learn to reach out to others they find that life looks brighter. Dot. The term depression literally means a low point in the ground, it has become a metaphor for a mental condition, of feeling low, another metaphor. Depression. Low. Bout refers to a round of fighting. Bout. The gesture of reaching out and the optical image of something becoming brighter are more obvious metaphors. Reaching out, brighter. The point is, dull prose, another metaphor, is actually alive with unconscious metaphors. According to Emerson, every word was once a poem. Emerson. As Emerson observes, the etymologist finds the deadest word to have been once a brilliant picture. Language is fossil poetry. Emerson. Dot. 2024 Chapter 101 Number 4 The human capacity to imagine has always been fraught with contradiction. As imagination has allowed people to imbue their thoughts with physical or oral form, of the imagination have been contested throughout history as subjective or inauthentic. It seems we can never get a story or idea exactly right or change it in a way that satisfies everyone. Philosophers around the globe and throughout history have written about this curios disconnection between reality and perception. Plato and Parmenides pointed out that perceptions of the actual and the imaginary were different. Aristotle and Confucius observed the worldly experience was relative to viewer. Siddhartha and Hegel added that our impressions change over time. Heidegger said that the surrounding world is different for each of us. Dot. And Freud complicated matter further by suggesting that we live not in a common world but in a common thought process. Things have only gotten more complicated as media and communication technologies have created ever more vivid ways of seeing the real world and imaginary alternatives to it. 2024 Chapter 11 2. Number Let's check it out. People seem to live their lives as if each decision will have important implications for their happiness at least people in Western industrialized countries that tend to prioritize individualism. People often believe that the choices they make will have direct and lasting effects on their subjective well-being. And although it's true that short-term changes in the emotion of happiness are like to occur when positive events happen, much research suggests that the lasting effect on the broader form of happiness the form that psychologists call subjective well-being will be shorter-lived and less intense. This is in part due to the fact that people's personalities also influence these long-term levels of well-being perhaps directly or maybe through the life choice associated with personality. Regardless of the reasons, which are still being explored, long-term levels of happiness depend less on the situational factors than many people think. 2024 Chapter 11 2. Number 1. Obviously, we need a certain amount of light to read. In reading isolated characters or words, an optimum level of stimulus light intensity can be determined using recognition latency tasks. This optimum level is not as meaningful when dealing with a normal reading situation or even when dealing with single word recognition when the words are presented with some amount of contextual information. In normal reading situations, the intensity will have small or no effects on recognition time or reading when it is within a fairly broad, moderate range of values. This will hold true for other types of physical degradation of stimuli, such as placing words in a field of random lines or dots. The negative effect of degrading stimuli seems to be reduced when contextual information is given with the stimuli to be read. Thus, the fact that text has been degraded will not matter much to a fluent reader in a fairly normal, moderately illuminated reading situation. It may, though, have an effect on the inexperienced reader who cannot yet use contextual information as readily as can the good reader. 2024 Chapter 11 2. Number 2. In scene writing Seeing a reversal in terms of an abrupt shift enables you to mine your material for the best surprises by using what has come before as a resource. The implicit question, opposite of what, allows you to find surprises that emanate from the expectations and setups in a scene. This will have a profound impact on the unity and coherence of your entire script. If a character enters a scene fighting for an apology and instead ends up giving one, then that is a pleasant surprise. However, if a character wants an apology and ends up being kidnapped by aliens, the audience will be confused instead of satisfied. 
surprise happens when an action is a reaction or an organic offshoot from what we expect. Create a setup and twist the expectation. Confusion comes when a jarring action comes out of left field, disconnected from what came before. 2024 Chapter 1 1 2 Number 3 Teachers and caregivers should provide enough time for children to explore a technology tool before having set lessons using it. Before children's tablet PC use, for instance, teachers can allocate instructional time in a whole class setting. PC During this time, teachers can explain what to do with the tablet PC by modeling step-by-step -step use for 1015 minutes. 1015 PC This first step includes how to turn on and turn the volume up and down on the tablet PC, and how to open an app. PC. This exploratory time is very important as it allows children to be aware of how they will use these technologies for increasing their learning. Then the teacher can discuss the rules for table PC use during classroom discussion. PC. The teacher can create a learning center where the children can actually play with and explore the tablet PC. PC. When children have question or seem confused, the adult should support them by answering or modeling again. Young children are capable of being creative and using technologies when they have relevant and proper adult guidance and involvement. 2024 Chapter 1 1 2 Number 4 The term ecological niche is frequently misunderstood. It is often misused to describe the sort of place in which an organism lives, as in the sentence, woodlands are the niche of woodpeckers. Dot. Strictly, however, where an organism lives is its habitat. A niche is not a place but an idea, a summary of the organism's tolerances and requirements. The habit of a gut microorganism would be an animal's alimentary canal, the habitat of an aphid might be a garden, and the habitat of a fish could be a whole lake. Each habitat, however, provides many different niches, many other organisms also live in the gut, the garden, or the lake and with quite different lifestyles. The word niche began to gain its present scientific meaning when Elton wrote in 1933 that nice of an organism is its mode of life in the sense that we speak of traits or jobs or professions in a human community. 1933 Elton The niche of an organism started to be used to describe how, rather than just where, an organism lives. 2024 Chapter 1 2 Number Let's check it out. For most Americans, the architecture of European cities is like a half-learned foreign language. When we are hungry and thirsty we can probably find a restaurant or a cafe, but we often can't tell from outside what sort of drink and food will be served inside or whether we will be welcome there. In Africa or Asia architectural signs that are obvious to locals can be completely unintelligible to us. We may not even recognize places where food and drink are for sale, we may mistake a palace for a temple, and a private house for a government office, or vice versa. We may shock or anger local citizens when we enter spaces that to them are obviously out of bounds for us, as I once did when I followed my husband into a mosque and was met with what sounded like parents scolding a child. 2024 Chapter 1 2 Number 1 It's not always easy to distinguish evaluative feedback from coaching feedback. When a board member phoned James to suggest that he start the next quarter's CFO presentation with analyst predictions rather than internal projections, was that intended as a helpful suggestion, or was it a veiled criticism of his usual approach? James CFO? When in doubt, people tend to assume the worst and to put even well-intentioned coaching into the evaluation bin. Feeling judged is likely to set off your identity triggers, and the resulting anxiety can drown out the opportunity to learn. So whenever possible, sort toward coaching. Work to hear feedback as potentially valuable advice from a fresh perspective rather than as an accusation of how you've done things in the past. When James took that approach, the suggestion became less emotionally loaded, he says. James. I decided to hear it as simply an indication of how that board member might more easily digest quarterly information. Dot. 2024 Chapter. 1 2. Number. 2. There are always unfortunate species who suffer catastrophic extinction, for whom the world seems to have reserved a quixotic and tragic doom. This circumstance has been most trenchantly captured in the title of Rob's text, Bad Genes or Bad Luck. Rob. It seems that a species can take great, if unconscious, precautions in adapting to its particular environment, only to see that environment change rapidly as a result of an apparently revengeful and arbitrary act of fate. In some ways, the most outstanding of all human characteristics as a species is our meta-adaptive abilities. That is, we have taken behavioral flexibility, 
and is extension through manufactured technologies, to greater heights than any form of life has ever previously exhibited. Paradoxically, then it will take a catastrophe of global proportions to generate a human extinction event. That such a catastrophe might well be self-generated is one of the darker cosmic jokes. 2024 Chapter 1-2 Number 3 The age of the Internet, the networked world, has brought about a major, some suggest a tectonic, shift in the way commerce is viewed and conducted. What became known as the dot-com world challenged long-established economic principles. The rush was to web-enable the enterprise in some manner regardless of its economic value. The mantra of the time, to quote the movie Field of Dreams, was if you build it they will come. Field of Dreams, dot. However, the era of the dot-com quickly became the age of the dot-gone. Although visibility on the web was, and is, increasingly important, profits still matter. Carl Shapiro and Hal Arvarian in their work Information Rules. Carl Shapiro Hal Arvarian Information Rules. A strategic guide to the network economy, stress that you ignore basic economic principles at your own risk. A strategic guide to the network economy. Technology changes, but economic laws do not. The book addresses a number of issues, including pricing and versioning information, rights management, recognizing and managing lock-in, switching costs, and how to account for government policy and regulation in strategy development. 2024 Chapter 1-2 Number 4 Everything that can be seen in the universe, everything that scientists have spent centuries learning about, may only be comparable to the froth on a huge cup of hot cocoa. This is because what makes up almost all of the universe cannot be seen and can barely be detected. In the last few decades, Scientists have come to understand that there is much more to the universe than the typical forms of matter and energy that have been known for a hundred years or more. 100. Even more importantly, the ultimate fate of our universe probably depends on unseen and exotic forms of matter and energy. Imagine spending your entire life in a home, coming to know every corner, every hiding spot, and every detail of your home. Then, one day, you wake up and find out that what you thought of as home was only a very small apartment in a huge skyscraper. At the moment, this is where we find ourselves, and we are trying to find the key to start exploring the rest of the building. 2024 Chapter 1-3 Number Let's check it out. Anthropologist David Nettle ran an interesting simulation, along similar lines to the Hawk Dove game. David Nettle He set up artificial world where cooperation was necessary for survival, and individuals could choose whom they wised to cooperate with. When he allowed individuals to cooperate only with others who spoke the same dialect, hawks were kept down to a much smaller percentage of the total population than when dialect wasn't a factor. None of this is very surprising, we already know that reciprocity based on proximity is one of the ways cooperation can evolve in a species. Most interestingly, Nettle found that this system of using dialects as societal pressure worked best when they changed rapidly from generation to generation. Nettle the simulation mirrored the manner in which these changes occur in life, historically, there are clear differences in human dialects over only a few generations. 2024 Chapter 1-3 Number 1. From following and using naturally occurring fires it is a small step to keeping those fires alight. Australian Aborigines have a long history of using fire to manage their environment, setting light to areas of bush to cook seeds and insects and provoking new growth of edible plants. By so doing they have transformed their landscape, promoting the growth of the fire-resistant eucalyptus trees that now dominate the Australian bush. To do this, they simply carry slow-burning logs with them as they travel about the bush, lighting fires when they need them. And from keeping fire alight in slow-burning logs, it is only another small step to keeping a fire burning at a permanent camp, and building it up at night to drive away predators. For early hominins, it would at last have been safe to stay permanently on the ground. 2024 Chapter 1-3 Number 2 After the killing in World War II ended in 1945 a number of world leaders asked, what should be done to prevent a person like Adolf Hitler coming to power again? 19452 One of the answers given was to prevent an international economic collapse, such as the Great Depression, which created the conditions that led to the rise of Hitler. With that idea in mind, it was agreed that trade among nations should be encouraged so that, it was hoped, prosperity would spread and economies would become more interdependent. In 1947, under the sponsorship of the United Nations, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, 
was signed by about 20 countries. 194720, GATT. These countries, later joined by about a hundred others, conducted a series of negotiations to promote free trade by reducing tariffs and other barriers to trade such as import quotas. 2024 Chapter 13 Number 3 A famous paraglider pilot, Bob Drury, is quoted as saying, We do these things not to escape life, but to prevent life escaping us. Bob Drury. That is, people engage in life-threatening activities not because they have some death wish but because they experience what it means to be alive when they are dealing with extreme challenges. The danger associated with many extreme sports is not itself the critical motivating factor for these athletes, rather, it is the challenge of overcoming extraordinary obstacles and difficulties. Danger just happens to be associated with such extreme challenges. Eric Brimer, an expert on what people experience when engaging in extreme sports, sees direct parallels between this experience and those in non-dangerous activities such as meditation. Eric Bremer 2024 Chapter 13 Number 4 There are a number of psychological factors that would cause someone to believe he or she had influence over a situation in which there was little or none or to overestimate the amount of influence possessed. One such factor is the motivational bias for individuals to want to see themselves in the most favorable light possible the so-called self-enhancement bias. In his book Social Psychology, David Myers has reviewed the extensive literature documenting the tendency of individuals to regard themselves as more intelligent, skilled, ethical, honest, persistent, original, friendly, reliable, attractive, fair-minded, and even better drivers than others. Social Psychology David Myers In the negotiations literature, this self-enhancement effect has been shown to lead to overconfidence, for instance, in a situation of final offer arbitration, the individuals involved thought their offer had a 68% chance of winning. 68% This overconfidence often hinders the willingness to make compromises, find integrative solutions, or negotiate rationally. 2024 Chapter 14 Number Let's check it out. There are cases when systems lose their resilience. Take your own body, for example. It is exposed to many viruses and bacteria each day without you being aware of it. If your immune system is powerful, it will fight back against the invaders and stay healthy. You might catch a cold depending on the germ, but you'll heal eventually. But resilience can be lost with aging. This is especially true in the case of living systems. Think about bone density depletion over a woman's lifetime. Due to the weakness of her bones, the hip breaks easier if she falls. Then, because of the same weakness, the recovery is longer. Her health declines because she doesn't exercise regularly or eat as well. Standing to cook is a strain. This woman would need an orthopedist and a skilled internist who would look at her nutritional health, a physical therapist, and a therapist to help her mental health. An injury like this could devastate an otherwise vibrant person. It is a profound breakdown of multiple subsystems in her body. 2024 Chapter 14 Number 1. When you perform data analysis Reminding yourself of your question serves to provide a framework for your interpretation. For example, your original question may have been for every 12-ounce can of soda drunk per day, how much greater is the average BMI among adults in the United States? 1-2 The wording of the question tells you that your original intent was to determine how much greater the BMI is among adults in the U.S. who drink, for example, two 12-ounce cans of soda per day on average, than among adults who drink only one 12-ounce soda per day on average. 1212. The interpretation of your analyses should yield a statement such as for every one additional 12 ounce can of soda that adults in the U.S. drink, BMI increases, on average, by XKG slash M superscript 2. 12 XKG slash M superscript 2. Dot. But it should not yield a statement such as for every additional ounce of soda that adults in the U.S. drink, BMI increases, on average, by XKG slash M superscript 2. 1 XKG slash M superscript 2 dot 2024 chapter 14 Number 2 Many experts claim that large pharmaceutical companies have in recent times become far more focused on making money than on creating needed new drugs. For example, these drug companies concentrate on research that will yield drugs for long-term illnesses or conditions. It is extremely profitable to make drugs to treat an illness people will have forever or to create a drug that will cure a condition such as baldness, that will always be with us. It is certainly important to create drugs to treat long-term illnesses, 
such as diabetes. But it is far more important to create new antibiotics to combat deadly infections than it is to produce vanity drugs that grow hair. The problem is that there is not much profit in making antibiotics. A new antibiotic must be formulated and then tested for safety. Only then can it be sold to the public. Of course, eventually the disease-causing bacteria will become resistant to the new antibiotic. All of the drug company's research will have been wasted. They will have to start again making another antibiotic. This process is not profitable. For this reason, very little research is being done to develop new antibiotics to kill bacteria that have become resistant to existing drugs. 2024 Chapter 14 Number 3 A major problem occurs when there are unexpected, negative consequences because of health education. These can be the result of erroneous, poorly planned, or improperly implemented education efforts. For instance, suppose you want to teach a group of people who are newly diagnosed with cancer that there is hope. You ask four or five people with cancer to speak to your group. Unfortunately, several of the presenters are dealing with anger and depression because of their disease, and they take this opportunity to share their pain and frustration with the healthcare system. At the end of the session, your audience is likely to be confused, at the least, or to feel complete despair, at the worst. They may lose confidence in the ability to survive cancer treatment. They may even decide to give up therapy altogether and get it over with. Although this example is quite extreme, problems can occur even under ideal circumstances. 2024 Chapter 14 Number 4 Schistosomiasis, a parasitic disease spread by snails, provides a dramatic example of the relationship between political ecology and disease. For decades, Economic development programs throughout the world have often focused on the building of dams to prevent seasonal flooding, improve irrigation, and provide hydroelectric power. Enormous dams, such as the Aswan High Dam on the Nile River, have dramatically altered the ecology of surrounding areas by preventing seasonal flooding and creating one of the largest man-made bodies of water in the world. A byproduct of such changes, however, is an altered relationship between human populations and certain waterborne parasitic infections such as schistosomiasis. The small snails that carry schistosomiasis thrive in the numerous irrigation canals emanating from the dams, increasing human exposure to the parasites. This exposure has led to an increased risk of contracting schistosomiasis, an infection that primarily affects children, in people that live close to some kinds of dams and irrigation systems. But the way this relationship plays out depends on the larger ecological context of the dam, as well as the socio-economic status of people at risk. 2024 Chapter 15 Number Let's check it out. Ancient religion is, perhaps, one of the most fascinating aspects of archaeological study. It is also one of the challenging. As is the case with other areas of research such as trade or status, important insights into ancient religion may be provided by written texts. When available, these sources may offer a great deal of information. Yet such descriptions are often lacking and in many cases written texts only present certain aspects of religious practices. In such cases archaeologists must infer religious beliefs from material culture, and this is difficult. A standard joke among archaeologists when confronting an artifact whose function is unknown is to describe it as a ritual object, an explanation that serves to underscore the challenge of inferring the complex, non-material aspect of past cultures. 2024 Chapter 15 Number 1 in our evolutionary history, innate and learned responses to food properties were an adaptive response to real or potential energy requirements. These energy needs are still real, although reduced by our sedentary lifestyle, but what has changed is that sufficient energy is now always available. The same is true of other nutrients that the body values, such as salt. At the same time, our diets are still driven by the same pleasure-seeking processes that have always operated and we tend to resist reductions in those food ingredients that contribute to sensory pleasure. For instance, attempts to reduce our physiologically excessive salt intake by using low-salt versions of products typically fail due to their lack of flavor impact. A 50% reduction of salt Indiana bread might have quite a substantial impact on the amount of salt in our diet because bread is a staple. 5-0 But this will mainly be due to a dramatically reduced intake of a product that now tastes like cardboard. 2024 Chapter 15 Number 2 a number of factors are thought to contribute to heat death in animals. 
One is that many of the enzymatic processes that govern our most fundamental biochemical processes depend critically on temperature. Many of these processes entail complex chains of reactions, and each link in the chain depends on all the others. Therefore, if some enzymatic reactions are affected by changes in temperature more than others, the coordination of the entire chain of reactions can be disrupted. It is as if a candy factory suddenly began adding twice the usual amount of sugar to each vat without doubling the other ingredients. The fact that Antarctic fish and humans, although many of their biochemical processes are similar, have evolved different body temperatures means that the regulation of their biochemical processes must also have adapted to those body temperatures. Thus when Antarctic fish encounter the hot water temperature of 6 C, the chain of enzymatic reactions in their bodies becomes uncoordinated and they die. 6. The same is undoubtedly true for humans during heat stroke. 2024 Chapter 15. Number 3. There are a number of reasons why non-human animals share urban spaces, and almost all are the result of human actions. Urban sprawl has caused cities to spread into previously undeveloped areas. Thus, some animals formerly in more rural spaces have been swallowed up into cities, creating surviving populations and inevitable interactions between human and non-human animals. While the forces of urban growth have led to increasing numbers of animals in cities, the opposite is also true. For deindustrializing and depopulating cities, an increase in green space provides environments for a number of non-human animals to survive and thrive in formerly urbanized areas. The combination of human financial distress and such regreening has led cities like Detroit to have a significant stray and wild dog population, with implications for both humans and wildlife. Detroit Animals also reside in cities as the result of human habitation, either because they have been brought there with humans as pets or because they have followed humans there due to the prevalence of shelter, food, and human waste products. 2024 Chapter 16 Number 4 Musical improvisation is, to many in the Western world, an activity covered in mystery. Most listeners are familiar with some genres of music in which improvisation is a commonplace, such as rock and other popular styles, jazz, or perhaps ethnic musics that is to say, composed or improvised traditional musics falling outside the typical Western rules. Therefore listeners are aware that many musicians can, and routinely do, produce novel musical utterances in real time, and in fact can differentiate between planned and spontaneous music making. The question for most listeners is not can music be improvised, but rather how is improvisation carried out? With this formulation of the question, musical improvisation becomes a suitable topic for psychological investigation, focusing on cognitive, physical and interpersonal processes, and on the musical structures on which these processes operate. Viewed in this way, there are parallels that can be seen with regard to processes of verbal production. No one would think it unusual to find native speakers of a language producing new utterances spontaneously, indeed, to find someone without such an ability is the unusual case. 2024 Chapter 16 Number Let's check it out. Although it has long been seen as a negative emotion, in action, and in the brain, anger looks a lot like happiness, an emotion that also utilizes the left hemisphere. In a series of studies, Research psychologists Jennifer Lerner and Dr. Keltner compared adults who were fearful, angry, or happy. Jennifer Lerner Dr. Keltner In contrast with fearful adults, those who were angry or happy shared similarly optimistic predictions about their future, even about events that they may or may not be able to control, such as having a heart attack, finding a job, choosing a profession, or marrying well. Further work suggests that the optimism they experience is not quite the same. While happy people tend to believe good things will come their way, those who feel angry are more likely to believe that they will make good things happen for themselves. The optimism that angry people feel may be closer to having faith in oneself rather than having faith in the world, or so said researchers Jennifer Lerner and Larissa Titans. Jennifer Lerner Larissa Titans It produces a bias toward seeing the self as powerful and capable. Both angry people and happy people show a favorable attitude towards the future but the outlook of the former is likely based on their self-assurance, not on their trust in the world. 2024 Chapter 16 Number 1 While folk groups are frequently spoken of as communities, it is useful to distinguish between the two. A folk group offers a collective identity, but a community involves a sense of mutual obligation and support. People think of a community as a group on which they can depend, who they can trust to be there when needed. The assumption of mutual obligation also exists, people expect to return something to a community. 
That return might be actions, such as bringing a dish to a potluck, but it can also be an attitude of caring about and valuing other members. In this sense, sharing recipes or sharing photographs of the results of following someone else's recipe can be a way of giving back to the community. As such, folk groups as communities have an emotional component. People feel attached to them, and then feel happy with their support but sadness when they fail in that support. Unlike folk groups that are characterized by having a shared identity, community members are expected to have an attitude of mutual obligation and support, and in that sense, community-like folk groups give their members a sense of belonging based on emotional involvement. 2024 Chapter 16 Number 2 While the mass emigration of graduates may have short-term collective costs for some countries, research on the new economics of brain drain suggests that it may have medium and long-term benefits. Oded Stark observes that the problem of brain drain is rooted in the leakage of human capital from a country, but seen within a broader context, this concern is exaggerated. Oded Stark Without the prospect of migration, people generally underinvest in their education because the opportunities for putting it to use and the relative competition for jobs may not require much schooling. However, knowledge of the opportunity to migrate to a developed economy where wages are higher for skilled labor leads people to pursue more advanced education. While the country still loses a proportion of its human capital to emigration, it is left with a higher number of graduates within the country than it would have without brain drain. Migration, Stark notes, is a harbinger of human capital gain and not the culprit of human capital drain. Stark People's awareness of emigration opportunities can create an incentive to obtaining higher education, which eventually can lead to an overall improvement in those countries' human capital. 2024 Chapter 16 Number 3. To a degree, it's natural to congratulate ourselves when we succeed and find someone else to blame when we fail it's part of being human. But when leading others, it's dangerous logic. Confident leaders put most of their emphasis on having an internal locus of control for both successes and failures. When they succeed, they know that it is due, in part, to effective leadership of their team. And when they fail, they take ownership. In contrast, because self-absorbed leaders could never fathom that their actions would lead to failure, they take advantage of an internal locus of control by overstating the impact of their own actions on successes, and they take advantage of an external locus of control for failure by overstating the impact of factors beyond their control. When cornered, they use the demons of a strong external locus, excuses and blame. It is far more important to them that they keep their sense of superiority intact than that they accurately gauge the realities of a situation or learn from both successes and failures. Self-absorbed leaders tend to claim credit for success and attribute failures to external factors, while confident leaders embrace their role in both positive and negative outcomes. 2024 Chapter 16 Number 4 Communication technologies have had a great impact on reducing isolation. Blogs and social media link rural residents with people who share their interests around the world. Rural residents now watch opera from New York, football games from San Francisco, the ballet from Houston, and congressional deliberations from Washington, D.C., through satellite dishes. D.C. Rural people have become as literate, informed, and enriched as their urban counterparts. There is still a rural-urban connectivity divide, however. Many residents on reservations in the Great Plains do not have phone service, much less broadband internet connectivity, and wireless strategies based on satellites still present problems in steep mountain areas. The isolation that distance once imposed is much less than it once was, yet communities that are rural and remote and those that are persistently poor are much more isolated than rural residents in areas of urban sprawl and high rural amenities. Although advances in communication technology have somewhat eased the isolation problem caused by distance, there is still a gap in communication accessibility for people living in remote areas and those who continue to be poor. 2024 Chapter 17 12 Number Let's check it out. Computer scientists have discovered that the most effective method of teaching human-like intelligence to machines is to give computer programs their own kind of dreams. These dreams, called noise injections, make the programs more flexible and adaptive in their thinking. Here's how a noise injection works. First, an AI program is given a real-world data set to analyze and interpret. AI. It learns to process and make accurate predictions based on that data. Then, when the program is working well, it gets fed purposefully weirder versions of the same data. These new data sets are dreamlike by design. In computer science, 
noisy data refers to data that is meaningless, that cannot be easily understood or interpreted correctly by machines. And so noise injections randomly warp and recombine the real-world information in novel ways that are designed to surprise and temporarily confuse the AI program. AI They show the program things it has never seen before, things that don't make sense. These weird data sets are also often more sparse, or less detailed, than the original data sets. They remove essential data points and require the program to stretch and strain to try to fill in the blanks of what's missing. The purpose of noise injections is to make sure that an AI program learns how to handle stuff it has never seen before, things it's harder to make sense of. AI They ensure that the program doesn't assume all future real-world data will look exactly like whatever it has already seen. In other words, they safeguard the machine version from future shock, they teach the AI program to expect the unexpected and not freeze up when never-before-seen data comes in. AI 2024 Chapter 17 one two number. One zero two. Misspellings are a rich source of new words. One such word appeared in a report put out by the Colorado Public Utilities Commission in the early L980s. 1980 Colorado Public Utilities Commission. While reading through this report, clean energy advocate Amory Lovins and a colleague noted an odd word, Nigawatt. Amory Lovins Nigawatt. It was a typographical error. The report writer meant to say megawatt. Megawatt. But the more Lovins thought about it, the more sense that typo made. Lovins. Why not call a unit of electricity that is saved rather than consumed Nigawatts? Nigawatt? Lovins floated the new word in a 1984 Business Week interview, then included it in a 1988 report called Nigawatts for Arkansas, and in a 1989 speech titled The Nigawatt Revolution Solving the CO2 Problem. Lovins 1984 Business Week. 1988 Nigawatts for Arkansas 1989 The Nigawatt Revolution Solving the CO2 Problem Nigawatt caught on quickly and has been part of the alternative energy vocabulary ever since. Nigawatt In France an environmental think tank calls itself the Association Nigawatt. Association Nigawatt Mistakes are an integral part of language expansion. This process is comparable to the role errors play in evolution. A species' success depends on random mutations that evolve into valuable traits over time. In a similar sense, many useful new words have resulted from simple mistakes such as typos, tongue slips, and mistranslations. Verbal blundering is integral to language, Michael Erard writes in his book Um, not something that intrudes upon it. Michael Erard Um Because human language has ways to deal with accidents and interruptions, they must have evolved alongside language itself. Dot. 2024 Chapter 17 12 Number 304 A common problem many scripts suffer from is what I call toing and froing. This is when the action seesaws back and forth between scenes too many times in a sequence. Characters go to the same locales, playing the same beats and refusing to take action. While this may be an accurate portrait of life, it's troublesome in plotting. It tends to create action that feels repetitive, makes characters seem passive, and bores the audience. Movement must lead somewhere. Even if a character hesitates in the plot before committing to a course of action, these shifts need to be played out in such a way that they don't wear thin the audience's patience. Generally, we move through these beats of the story quickly, to get to more definitive action. Toing and froing is easy to spot in a script. You look for the places in the screenplay where characters go back and forth between the same locations. For example, your protagonist Jack is at home and calls his stubborn girl fiend Jill, who isn't at her place. Jack Jill. He goes to her house anyway and knocks. She's not there, so he goes home. At home she calls him and tells him to come over. He returns to her house to learn she's leaving him. This action takes five beats to communicate that Jack's girlfriend is dumping him. Jack. This could easily be trimmed to one or two scenes. Wherever you seem to be going back and forth between locations, Look hard and see if you can do it in one step instead of three. If you need more than one, will two do? You are looking to build firm action, action with a purpose that leads somewhere, somewhere where something will happen. 2024 Chapter 18 13 Number Let's check it out. On fall afternoon, Nina's third grade Girl Scout troop discussed the importance of dreams and goals. Nina 3 After their discussion, the girls fell silent when Helen, troop advisor, and Nina's mom, pulled out a brightly decorated can. Nina Helen. This, girls, is a dream keeper. 
I want each of you to write one special dream that you want to accomplish this year and deposit it here. We'll try to make every dream come true, and in spring we'll open this and see how many we've accomplished. Dot. She distributed paper and pens to the girls. When they were finished, Helen picked up the first slip of paper. Helen. It was Sarah's had written, Go horseback riding. Sarah. Helen smiled with relief. Helen. She predicted that the girls would earn the horse lover's badge, which included horseback riding. Horse lovers. Jillian had written, Go to an amusement park. Jillian. Great. Marine would had an annual Girl Scout Day, and their cookie proceeds could fund that. Marine World. Corinne had written, Go camping. Corinne. Helen loved camping and would be happy to lead a trip. Helen. Rachel had written, Get a kitten. Raquel. That would be a little trickier, but Helen would encourage her to earn the pet care badge. Helen Pet Care. Her parents loved animals and would agree to her dream. Helen started anxiously at the last slip before her. Helen. It was the one she most longed and most dreaded to read, her daughter's. With a child's faith, Nina believed that dreams come true. Nina. Slowly Helen unfolded the paper. Helen. Nina's writing was dark and firm, go to the Olympics. Nina. Helen cited. Helen. It was a trip they couldn't afford. That night she lay awake in bed thinking how she could show Nina that dreams are worth holding on to. Nina. The next K during dinner Helen said, I bet that someday you will go to the Olympics. Helen. But we can't afford that trip this year. So instead, let's go see the torchbearers when they run through town, watch the games on television, and look for newspaper articles. Teev, dot. It was all she could think to do. Nina paused for a moment, and then she smiled brightly. Nina. Thanks, Mom. Doing those things will be great. She added, but I'll save money and pray about it so that I can realize my dream. Dot. Helen hugged Nina. Helen Nina. Admiration for her good here washed over Helen. Helen. 2024 Chapter. 18. 13 Number. 103. A pragmatist, Kafka knew he couldn't rely on making a living as a writer. Kafka. He pursued several fields in college chemistry, philosophy, the humanities before landing in what he considered the most adaptable field of all, law. But he continued to write on the side, and after abandoning his first attempt at a novel in 1904, he began work on a short story that he wrestled with for five years, the aptly named Description of a Struggle. 1904, 5. To break up all his legal studies, Kafka took a philosophy course on Schopenhauer. Kafka Skopenhauer. During one class, his young lecturer called Friedrich Nietzsche a fraud, Kafka objected. Friedrich Nietzsche. Kafka. The two got into a debate that went on for hours after the class ended. The man was Max Broad, and he became one of the best friends Kafka ever had. Max Broad, Kafka. Broad was a self-proclaimed polymath, writer, poet, musician, philosopher, critic, and Kafka agreed to show him a draft of his short story. Broad, Kafka. Broad read it and spotted Kafka's gift. Broad Kafka. He insisted Kafka publish it immediately, but the self-hating writer resisted. Kafka. The more Kafka questioned his abilities, the more Broad encouraged him. Kafka Broad. It was the first of a lifetime of such encounters. Broad worked tirelessly to stop his fiend from burning manuscripts and have him instead submit them for publication. Broad. Eventually, Kafka submitted Description of a Struggle, and it was published. Kafka. Thanks to the support of his friend, he continued to write regularly until he died of tuberculosis at age 40. 40. While he was dying, Kafka instructed both his lover Dora Diamant and Broad to destroy all of his manuscripts. Kafka, Dora Diamant Broad. Diamant complied and burned every piece of his writing she had. Diamant. Broad, however, ignored Kafka's demand and set about the task of editing and publishing every story in his possession, including America, the trial, and the castle. Broad Kafka America, the trial, the castle. Without Broad's denial of a deathbed request, the world may have lost some of the work of one of its most creative authors, whose dark imagination and deep feelings of alienation and frustration with modern life fueled a new generation of writers. Broad. 2024 Chapter. 18. 
one three number four zero six for Cindy, mastering reading and writing was the most difficult thing to accomplish all throughout her education. Cindy, in the second grade, Cindy received an individualized education plan for reading and would be pulled out regularly to go to the reading class. Two, Cindy. Fellow students often teased her when she was asked to read out loud. Seeing the teacher reach for the candy jar to randomly call on a student to read out loud made her sweet. When she took tests, Cindy felt horribly embarrassed when she was the last one still working. Cindy. She would begin to rush through to the end, and her scores suffered because of it. When Cindy was in fourth grade, she and her classmates were taking a standardized reading test in the computer lab. Cindy 4. The librarian Ms. Rose supervised them. Rose. Once again, Cindy got to the point when she was the only one left the computer lab. Cindy. She felt extremely embarrassed and stupid. Then Ms. Rose came over to her and said. You know, the people who usually take the longest on a test often do the best. Rose, dot. Wow. Her words changed Cindy's whole life. Cindy. From that point forward, she never cared if she was the last to finish, and she stopped rushing to the end of her test when she saw that her classmates were finishing up. There is no empirical truth to Ms. Rose's comment, people who take longer, do the best, but Cindy wouldn't have any reason to doubt in. Dot. Rose, Cindy. To her, the gist of this of this message was, I'm not stupid. I can do anything, given enough time. Dot. The act believing the message made it functional for her. The clever librarian crafted a simple, positive comment that captivated Cindy because it surprised her. Cindy. The element of surprise created a brief moment of mindset revision whereby Cindy accepted this comment and formed a new belief. Cindy. Now relaxed and confident, she inevitably took her time and performed more successfully. Even if she didn't experience immediate success, her expectation of achievement itself would serve to affirm a successful mindset. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 18 Dear Dr. Amanda Jones Amanda Jones Our city's Department of Waste Management provides a special service to residents who are disabled or physically unable to place their waste at designated collection points. To help them, we visit their homes and collect their waste. Mr. James Smith, one of your patients, has requested this special service. James Smith. In order to provide Mr. Smith with this service, we need to verify that his mobility is medically impaired. Smith. Therefore, with his consent, we would like to request that you provide medical documentation of Mr. Smith's physical impairment. Smith. Please find the attached form to fill out with his medical information. Your cooperation in this matter is greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Deborah Johnson, Operations Manager of Waste Collection Division. Deborah Johnson. 2024 Chapter. 1 Number. 19. Kate stared at Detective Will on the other side of the table. Cat Will. What brought him to my house? She wondered. Have you noticed anything strange at the Royce house lately? Will said. Will Royce. Well. It was unusually quiet, Kate said. Cat, dot. It was really strange that she hadn't seen the chatty old Mrs. Royce outside for the past few days. Royce. Kate was dying to know more. Cat. Will said, Joanne Royce is missing. Will Joanne Royce dot. Are you sure? Kate asked. Cat. Yet. Her son found her house unlocked and some valuables missing. He reported that Mrs. Royce hadn't been seen for more than 48 hours, Will replied. Royce 48. Dot. Will. Suddenly, Kate had a disturbing thought and her mouth dropped open. Cat. Has Mrs. Royce been kidnapped? She asked. Royce. Will replied, yes. We think she's been taken by someone without her consent. Will. Dot. Kate froze with the horrible idea that her neighbor was in serious danger. Cat. 2024 Chapter. 1 Number. 20. Life may throw you a curveball at some point, making you see your artwork from a different perspective, and you may need to address this issue. This could come in the form of a compositional problem, a technical issue, or a content problem. What is pivotal is that you flow with whatever changes are being presented to you and move in a direction that feels right, with your intuition in full operational mode. Changing your process for the good of the work is extremely important for success in the art world. 
Intuition carries us, especially in troubling areas of our creativity. We may find ourselves in situations where we feel completely lost, yet if we stand back, relax, and listen to the inner promptings, we can get ourselves out of any difficult artistic situation. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 21 Our attitude about delayed gratification changes in interesting ways from birth to death. As I see it, there are only two times in your adult life when instant gratification isn't a choice that tortures the soul. The first is in your early years of adulthood, when you have no sense of disappearing time. You don't see the need to save your money or take care of your health or, for that matter, devote yourself to a specific career. You can be extravagant with your time and resources because you have time to make up lost ground. Paying the price is something you can delay till some time later. The other time is late in life, when the gap between the now you and the future you narrows. At a certain age you become who you always thought you wanted to be, or, failing that high hurdle, accept who you have actually become. It's time to cash in your chips. So you book the expensive trip. You volunteer your time freely. You eat the quart of ice cream without guilt. 1. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 22. Whenever I am introduced to a work of art, whether through an image, or in person, I immediately begin to make judgments and assumptions about what I am seeing. I ask myself questions about the work and its creator. What is it about? What was the artist's intention? How was it made? How does it relate to other artists' work? I look around to see if I can find some information to begin answering my questions. This is why your work samples and artist statements are so important. Together, they form a more complete record that documents your past and present achievements. They are the two most essential tools you will use to promote your work throughout your career. They are the tools that art professionals will use to understand and support your work. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 23 Like modern baseball players, modern opera singers are also faced with conditions that an earlier generation could not imagine. They fly vast distances, jump off airplanes, and perform the most demanding roles, hardly batting an eye. They deal with a constantly shifting group of colleagues and somehow form a sense of ensemble. They confront widely varying acoustical conditions as they travel around the world's great opera houses. It is the musical equivalent of making the baseball superstar Babe Ruth suddenly play a day game after a night game on an eight-game West Coast swing, face a fresh relief pitcher throwing 95 miles an hour in the ninth inning, and deal with the post-game interview on a sport TV channel in which he gets to watch himself strike out with the bases loaded and then tell the interviewer how he feels. Babe Ruth 8, 995, TV Given these circumstances, and the toll they take on the mind and body, it must be admitted that the modern singers stack up very well indeed. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 24 As you observe the quality of the love, loyalty, emotional skills, compatibility and empathic awareness of your loved ones, thank the emotions that help you do this, thank your jealousy and your envy. In their soft, free-flowing states, these two emotions help you focus on what you need from your relationships. They also help you discern the depth of love and care you receive, the loyalty and security you feel, and the quality of your connection to stable sources of love, faithfulness, resources, recognition, and security. If you've created a number of healthy relationships with loving, available, emotionally aware, loyal, and stable people, then your healthy envy and jealousy have been active in your life already even if you didn't know it until this very second. When these two emotions are free to do their proper work, they'll help you identify and choose safe friends and healthy mates. Thank you, Jealousy and Envy. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 26 Rudolf Carl Gorman was a Navajo painter born in Chinle, Arizona. Rudolf Carl Gorman Chinle Navajo Gorman was known as the Picasso of American Indian art. Gorman He, like many children, drew from an early age. He was encouraged to develop his interest in art, which eventually led to a scholarship to the Mexico City College from the Navajo Tribal Council. Navajo Mexico City College Gorman moved to New Mexico, opening the Navajo Gallery in Taos in 1968. Gorman 1968 Dow's Navajo Gallery It was the first Native American-owned art gallery. In 1973, he was the only living artist whose work was shown in the Master Works from the Museum of the American Indian Exhibition held at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. 1973 The Metropolitan Museum of Art Gorman's work was influenced by Mexican social realists like Diego Rivera and David Sequeiros. 
Gormandiego River a David C. Cairos. Many of his paintings focus on Navajo women, their roles within the Navajo Nation, and how they relate to women the world over. Navajo, Navajo. He died at age 74. 74. New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson ordered flags flown at half-staff in his honor. Bill Richardson. 2024 Chapter. 1 Number. 29. The text-oriented theories dominating early 20th century literary criticism paid minimal attention to the reader's role. 20. Meaning in a literary work was to be found out there, in the words on the page. Unlike earlier traditions adopting more humanistic or integrative approaches to literary texts, the so-called new critics of the 1940s and 1950s generally insisted on the autonomy of the work itself, which could be interpreted through close, systematic reading, and detailed textual analysis. 19401950 Biography, personality, and intention of the author as well as cultural and historical contexts mattered less than internal consistency, illusion, and the clever resolution of ambiguity. Taking their cue from positivist success in other fields, literary critics of this time made reading more systematic by eliminating the most troublesome element in the literary process, the reader. Confusing the work with its psychological and emotional effects, they insisted, constituted an effective fallacy that resulted in a distorting relativism and an untrustworthy subjectivism. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 30. Democracy's constitution is not tradition-bound, it looks forward as well as backward. Because deliberative Democrats want to ensure rule by free and equal citizens, they refuse to honor traditions as such. A democratic constitution makes it more likely that people will look behind traditions in order to see what can be said on their behalf. For similar reasons, a self-governing citizenry does not take existing preferences and beliefs as unalterable, as natural, or as givens. A central point of deliberation, in the private and public domains, is to shape both preferences and beliefs, and frequently to alter them, by subjecting them to reasoned arguments. For the same reason, deliberative Democrats are skeptical of social practices that form preferences, and especially children's preferences, in a way that inculcates beliefs that threaten free and equal citizenship. A democratic constitution creates structures that will promote freedom in the formation of preferences and not simply implement whatever preferences people happen to have. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 31. During World War II, Hollywood actors and actresses volunteered their time and services to help the war effort. 2. Male megastars like Clark Gable, Jimmy Stewart, and Tyrone Power joined the armed forces. Clark Gable, Jimmy Stewart, Tyrone Power. Actresses flew across the country selling bonds. In Hollywood, some of the biggest stars could be found at night at the Hollywood canteen handing out coffee and donuts and chatting and dancing with men in the armed forces. Black and white movie studio musicians played live music. These humane gestures escalated into political acts when word got out that there were mixed couples blacks and whites dancing together. There was talk of racially separating the canteen. That ended when two-time Academy Award winner Bette Davis and John Garfield Major Warner Brothers stars and founders of the canteen said if that happened, the actors wouldn't come. Warner Brothers Bette Davis John Garfield Without actors, there would be no canteen. So, unlike the armed forces in World War II, or nightclubs in the United States, the Hollywood canteen was integrated. 2. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 32 if you were to take life from a purely functional and human-centric point of view, which I don't, it would not be straightforward to prove the absolute necessity of all today's biodiversity. It could possibly be tempting to think that fewer flies would make life more comfortable for humans, and the numbers of tigers and polar bears might even feel irrelevant to our everyday lives. Perhaps the ecosystem could survive being trimmed down a good bit further, and still supply all humankind's needs. What a desperately sad way of looking at the world. But if we were to adopt it, the easiest thing to do might be just to take the risk, right? However, careful assessment of the evidence makes it very clear that those risks would be enormous. At the very least we can expect falls in yields of crops, animal, and fish as well as loss of resilience against disease. And what if we suddenly realized we'd gone a step too far? There is no going back from extinction. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 33 In 20th century industrialized nations, Parameters such as infant mortality, childhood growth rates, and average life expectancy all indicate a state of public health far exceeding that which was obtained in the Stone Age or at any time thereafter until the current century. 20. Indeed, 
more than half the persons who have ever lived beyond age 65 are alive today. 65. Nevertheless, we can still profit from the experience of our remote ancestors. We still carry their inheritance genes selected for their way of life, not ours. Despite the achievements of science and technology, we remain collectively fearful of diseases that available evidence suggests were uncommon, rare, or unknown in the late Paleolithic era. In order to regain relative freedom from these illnesses, we need to take a step backward in time. For each disorder, we may anticipate increasingly sophisticated and effective treatments, but the crucial corrective measure will almost certainly be prevention. This will entail reintroduction of essential elements from the lifestyle of our Paleolithic ancestors. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 34. Suppose that a city has earned a reputation as a brown city where industrial polluters are degrading local quality of life. If both current and potential residents are offended by how the city looks and smells and are aware of the resulting risks to public health, then households are likely to vote with their feet. Current residents will move out of the city, and potential entrants will choose not to move in. As a result housing prices will fall. At the same time, cities offering a higher quality of life will experience in migration, which will bid up land prices, and bid down local wages. Prices will continue to adjust until migrants are just indifferent between living in the nicer city and the less pleasant one. In order for this condition to hold, the city with lower quality of life must offer lower rents and higher wages than the more attractive one. Economists call this implicit payment for local public goods a compensating differential. Households face a trade-off, if they want to live in a nicer city, they must pay more for housing. There is no free lunch. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 35. Although the idea of thinking outside the box sounds provocative, it is in most circumstances without substance. To begin with, how can you think outside the box if you don't know what the box is? It could represent your current product line, your company's boundaries, maybe even your industry's boundaries all essentially arbitrary designations. When a leader commits to thinking outside the box, it leads to unbalanced orchestration often involving innovation for the sake of innovation, a situation in which the innovation hammer is searching for new nails. A leader needs to have a vision and a strategic direction, and thinking outside the box slowly erodes that direction every bit as much as trying to be all things to all people does. It also violates the leadership principle of valuing effectiveness in all endeavors. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 36 An American Football Cheats the Wind The elongated shape reduces its frontal area the surface area exposed in the direction of travel. The smaller the frontal area, the fewer air molecules the ball has to push out of the way as it moves forward, which means less drag. Compare a football with a round ball with the same mass and total surface area and you'll find that the football has less frontal area than the round ball and thus can be thrown farther. Another way of understanding frontal area is by putting your hand out of the window of a moving car. If you face your palm forward, the wind pushes hard against your hand. But if you turn your hand 90 degrees, so that just the side of your hand faces forward, the frontal area is reduced and so is the wind resistance. 9-0 You can almost feel your hand slicing through the air. This is why sharks and rockets and race cars all have pointy noses. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 37 Scientists are often in the position of judging dramatic sounding claims. In 2012, physicists at the Large Hadron Collider announced the discovery of a new particle, most likely the long sought after Higgs boson. 2012, Large Hadron Collider. Scientists around the world were immediately ready to accept the claim, in part because they had good theoretical reasons for expecting the Higgs to be found exactly where it was, their prior was relatively high. In contrast, in 2011 a group of physicists announced that they had measured particles that were apparently moving faster than the speed of light. 2011. The reaction in that case was one of universal skepticism. This was not a judgment against the abilities of the experimenters, it simply reflected the fact that the prior credence assigned by most physicists to any particle moving faster than light was extremely low. And, indeed, a few months later the original team announced that their measurement had been in error. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 38 Apart from molds and mushrooms, fungi don't spring to mind as being important life forms, and yet they have a great impact on us. Fungi assist in the breakdown and recycling of dead and decaying organic matter in our environment. In addition to including mushrooms, morels, and truffles, some fungi are used to ripen cheese, 
and yeasts are used in the production of bread, alcoholic beverages, and industrial chemicals. Fungi are the source of the most important of all drugs, penicillin, and cyclosporin, a drug that prevents the rejection of transplanted organs. But 30% of the 100,000 species of fungi are parasites or pathogens. 1030. Plants are their favorite target, they've devastated fruit harvests and caused the American chestnut tree blight, Dutch elm tree disease, and ergotism, which killed 40,000 people in France in year 944 and has been implicated in causing illusions in those accused in the Salem witch trials. 944, 4, Salem. Fungi cause infections of the skin, athlete's foot, yeast infections, candidiasis, and life-threatening systemic infections. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 39 A number of archaeologists throughout the world are using their skills to both preserve archaeological sites and improve the lives of modern inhabitants of the communities where the sites are located. In countries such as Guatemala, the location of a number of spectacular Mayan ruins, archaeologists are increasingly integrating economic development and environmental preservation into their research programs. The ancient Mayan sites pose special conservation concerns because of their size. For example, Chakla, the focus of research by American archaeologist Jonathan Kaplan, has more than 60 mounds, large irrigation systems, and numerous monuments. Jonathan Kaplan Chakla 60. Information from the site has shed insight into the origins of Mayan civilization. Yet the farmers of modern Chakla, descendants of the ancient Maya, face poverty and disease. Chakla. In the face of such modern needs, the preservation of ancient monuments and the surrounding environment is of limited concern. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 40 In order to be effective, laws have to balance precision with vagueness. It might seem that the more precise the law, the better it is for those who have to obey and to enforce it. But clearly this is not always indeed not often the case. Let's take a very simple case. Where there is a sign stating no ball games in the park. A person practicing archery there ought not to expect to go ahead with impunity simply because the projectile in this case is not a ball. Equally, someone playing a handheld plastic pinball game would not expect to be apprehended for playing this particular ball game in the park. But to specify all proscribed projectiles, along with exceptions to the list, would be unbearably tedious, would require the environment to be even more polluted with signs, and much bigger signs at that, than it already is, and would convey much less information because few people would have the patience to read them. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 4142 Distrust is the action the trustor takes in not trusting the trustee to do X. X. Distrust is not the same as the betrayal of trust or demonstrations of untrustworthiness. An agent can choose not to trust, foregone trust, without actually distrusting. Distrust typically involves large risks. If the potential loss is not too great, but still less than the potential gain, then the agent may simply not trust the trustee rather than, more strongly, distrust them. Distrust entails relying on others outside of the exchange relationship, thus reducing dependence and increasing distrust. Distrust can foster more distrust, and clearly reduces the opportunities for positive trust outcomes that permit trust. The gains from trusting and being betrayed can be greater than the gains from distrusting since betrayal results in the end of the relationship and any future losses associated with that relationship. Distrust can be employed strategically to maintain power over others. Elements of organizational and institutional design often reflect such strategic decisions, independent of how they function in practice. Here's the example of prison design in fostering distrust between prisoners. The classic prisoner's dilemma leverages distrust between prisoners to provoke criminal confessions. More generally, those in power can foster distrust among those over whom they exercise power as a means of reducing threats to their own power. Alternatively, the powerless can use distrust of the powerful as a check on their exercise of authority. 2024 Chapter 1 Number 4345 Josh just started his journey to bicycle across Turkey. Josh Last night, his very first night, one cycle tourer next to his tent warned him, Remember, you're cycling Turkey. Stray dogs are not your problem. Today, Josh was about 25 miles past Istanbul, and one dog kept following his bicycle for about two hours. Josh Istanbul 25, 2. The dog reminded him of his dog that had died two years ago. 2. Rest in peace. Pushing on the pedals, to try to ignore the dog, he blasted away as only a pure sprinter can. 
Josh glanced behind. Josh. The dog was running after him as fast as it could, trying to hold its position. Josh arrived at one village and the dog moved out in front, which gave him hope that the dog thought this was home. Josh. But, suddenly, angry barking came from a field on his right, and four dogs ran out across the road. Josh shouted out, but they reached the dog and attacked it all at once. Josh. The dog didn't fight back, just accepting what was happening. He threw down his bicycle and ran screaming toward the dogs until they ran away. Josh knelt down, tears filling his eyes. Josh. The dog's big chocolate brown eyes melted his heart. He told the dog she was a good girl, and at that moment he named the dog Lucy. Lucy. As he stood up, so did Lucy, and she nuzzled into his leg. Lucy. Together, they walked the bike to a village shop. He told Lucy to wait outside with his bicycle and then laughed at himself. Lucy. How would it even understand me? Not only was it a dog and he human, Lucy was Turkish and he was British. Lucy. As soon as he entered the shop, the elderly shop owner began chatting away, not bothered that he understood anything. Josh tried to explain to him about the dog outside. Josh. Since he didn't comprehend, Josh took him outside and pointed to Lucy. Josh Lucy. He smiled and then disappeared back inside the shop. The old man reappeared, throwing bread at Lucy. Lucy. Then he motioned for Josh to cycle away while Lucy was distracted eating the bread. Lucy Josh. He said goodbye and thank you in one breath and got on his bike, cycling in the direction he had come. When he looked back, there was Lucy running as fast as she could across the village toward him. Lucy. She reached Josh with such force that she almost knocked him over, and he scooped her into his arms, telling her over and over what a good girl she was. Josh, Lucy, Lucy. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 18 Dear Johan Johan We're looking forward to learning more about your company so that we can propose the most appropriate equipment that will help you achieve your company's goals. Because your business is important to us, we wanted several of our staff to meet you during this initial discussion Yvonne Reynold, Vice President of Marketing, Glenn Fisher, one of our technical specialists, and Miles Burns, our design engineer. Yvonne Reynold, Glenn Fisher, Miles Burns. Coordinating our schedules has been difficult because Yvonne travels so extensively. Ivan. So I'm wondering, would you mind if we postponed our August 15th appointment until the week of September 1st? 81591? Please let me know if the week of September 1st will be a possibility for you. 91. If it's not possible, we can go ahead with the meeting as previously scheduled without Yvonne. Yvonne. We're looking forward to establishing a long-term, mutually beneficial relationship with you. Thank you. Sincerely, Carl Roth. Carl Roth. 2024 Chapter. 2 Number. 19. Everyone else's pencils were moving quickly as they worked on the math problem, and the more Sophie imagined how the others had understood it, the more she panicked. Sophie. Sophie's pencil shook in her hand as she worked on the problem. Sophie. She scribbled something down hoping that Mr. Klein wouldn't ask her to speak out in front of the class. Klein. Pencils down, said the teacher. Dot. Sophie obeyed, keeping her eyes on her exercise book. Sophie. Sophie, please tell us the answer to the first question. Sophie, dot. I think it's. She paused, delaying the inevitable ridicule she knew was coming her way. 21 squared, she said. 21. Does anyone else think that's the right answer? Asked the teacher, prolonging Sophie's agony. Sophie. Mr. Klein put his head slightly to the left side and said, that was incorrect, Sophie. Klein, Sophie. Just then, the end of school bell rang out. She sighed heavily and stared down at her paper. Her friends gathered to comfort Sophie, but she laid her head down at her desk and said, Sophie. Why me? I think it's better to give up maths as soon as. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 20 There's no law stating that if you want to build self-discipline, you need to immediately wake up at 4 in the morning, eat nothing but vegetables and fruits, work productively for 12 hours, 7 days a week, and abstain from every pleasure, trying to mimic the life of a medieval ascetic. 4, 712 
setting aside the fact that most of these habits are not necessary to become self-disciplined, self-control isn't built in one day. You're building it step by step starting from an easy challenge, and then building on top of it. Don't feel anxious or guilty that you begin your exercise plan with a 5-minute walk or that you commence your new nutrition plan with a resolution that you'll add one vegetable and subtract one candy bar a day. 5. Try it, see what happens, and if it works out, set a bigger challenge. Nothing else is needed to begin the journey to a new you. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 21 It is interesting to note that the quantum mechanics revolution was made by a virtually orphaned generation of scientists. Many members of the generation above them had been slaughtered in World War I. 1. There simply weren't many senior scientists around to tell them they were crazy. Today, for graduate students and postdocs to survive, they have to do things that people near retirement can understand. Doing science this way is like driving with the emergency brake on. Science requires a balance between rebellion and respect, so there will always be arguments between radicals and conservatives. But there is no balance in the current academic world. More than at any time in the history of science, the cards are stacked against the revolutionary. Such people are simply not tolerated in the research universities. Little wonder, then, that even when the science clearly calls for one, we can't seem to pull off a revolution. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 22 An accomplished photographer can communicate visual experiences that remain firmly defiant to words. The writer Albert Camus stated, If we understood the enigmas of life, there would be no need for art. Albert Camus, dot. We know that words have the power to name the unnameable, but words also hold within them the disclosure of a consciousness beyond language. Photographs may also convey the sensation and emotional weight of the subject without being bound by its physical content. By controlling time and space the photo-based images allow viewers to examine that which attracts us for often indescribable reasons. They may remind us how the quickly glimpsed, the half-remembered, and the partially understood images of our culture can tap into our memory and emotions and become part of a personal mental landscape that makes up an integral component of identity and social order. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 23. An important individual difference variable positively correlated with level of sport fandom is past or present participation as an athlete. In fact, the volume of early studies indicating that fans are or were actively involved in sport suggests that this variable may be one of the best predictors of sport fandom. Work in subsequent decades has proved the positive relationship between fandom and athletic participation, leading some to suggest that hosting major sporting events may lead to greater athletic participation. That is, the increased noticeability of an interest in fandom resulting from large-scale sporting events may increase sport participation rates among the population. Interestingly, one of the more common criticisms of sport fandom is the belief that these individuals are passive, sloth-like creatures who rarely get off their couch. However, the high levels of physical activity among sport fans are frequently used to challenge this stereotype. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 24 Social psychologists study the many ways people are influenced to accept ideas that they hear or read or even work out in their own thinking. It is important to know what constitutes good evidence and to recognize the ways people are influencing us not by evidence or good thinking but by tricks, by false logic, and by making themselves attractive. It is important to understand our emotional commitments, our values, our biases, our culture, and our positions and structures in order to evaluate how we should criticize our own views and those of others. In some ways learning is buying something from someone who is selling, freedom of thought must include a knowledgeable thinking process, being active rather than passive. One must habitually question, evaluate, and think about the knowledge and thinking he or she uses. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 26 Kenneth Mackenzie Clark was born in London in 1903 to a wealthy family in the textile trade, as the only son of Scottish parents Margaret and Kenneth Clark. Kenneth Mackenzie Clark 1903 Margaret Kenneth Clark The son of wealthy parents, Clark was introduced to art at an early age. Clark He graduated from Trinity College, Oxford in 1925. 1925 Oxford Trinity College In 1931, at the age of 27, Clark was appointed director of the Ashmolean Museum, and three years later he was hired as the National Gallery's youngest ever director. 1931 Clark 27 Ashmolean, 3 National Gallery. With the approach of war with Germany in 1939, he managed the relocation of the National Gallery's collection to a bomb shelter in Wales. 
1939, National Gallery Wales. He also introduced a series of lunchtime concerts at the National Gallery, which became hugely popular and served as a symbol of cultural resistance to Nazism. National Gallery In 1946, Clark resigned from the National Gallery to devote more time to writing, but he continued to give talks on the arts. 1946 Clark National Gallery After leaving the gallery, he became a celebrity, the public face of high culture, thanks to his TV program, Civilization in 1969. 1969 TV Civilization 2024 Chapter 2 Number 29 The world is going to depend on the rapidly developing economies for one of our most important natural resources fresh water. Over the last 100 years, water needs have increased tenfold. 10010 10, 10. Worldwide, the biggest user of fresh water is agriculture, which still represents 70% of all water used, with industry consuming about 21%, and individuals the remaining 10%. 70%, 21%, 10%. There is a widespread view that the wars of the future will be waged to secure water sources rather than oil or gas. A small number of countries make up the world's largest freshwater reservoir, accounting for 60% of resources and these include two of the four BRICS countries, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. 60% BRICS, 2. Brazil has the world's greatest water reserves, most of which are in the Amazon River, followed by Russia, which claims 20% of the world's total unfrozen freshwater reserve, in Lake Baikal. 20% The BRICS attitude to sustainability will impact the entire world. BRICS 2024 Chapter 2 Number 30 Although herbicide use is widespread in the context of invasive species management, most people in the restoration community consider herbicides a less than ideal option because of the known risks associated with their use. Land managers sometimes use mechanical methods like mowing, tilling, burning, and digging either alone or in concert with an herbicide in order to clear an invaded area, so that they end up using less herbicide to achieve their goals. But these methods aren't useful in all restoration projects since they tend to be unspecific. When a rototiller tills up soil, it tills everything, not just the target species. Sensitive or endangered native plants or animals might be harmed by these methods. They also might not be economically suitable when the invaded area is extensive. Mechanical control is a useful tool in non-chemical invasive species management, but people still typically use it within the framework of rooting out the invasive species quickly and completely a paradigm that fails to account for the whole system and thus is not ultimately effective. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 31 The process of developing higher yielding technologies is a self-amplifying process. Once new inputs become established, a process is unleashed that causes farmers to keep buying new technology and overproducing. This was explained in agricultural economist Willard Cochrane's theory of the technology treadmill. Willard Cochrane This classic theory points out that agricultural technologies are taken up by early adopters who reap initial profits. As more farmers adopt the new technology, overall production rises and prices drop, putting farmers under pressure to produce even more. Then other farmers are pressured to adopt the new technology in hopes of higher yields. The so-called laggards especially those with smaller operations can't afford the greater outlay, and are less able to recover the higher production costs at the lower output prices. This squeezes non-adopting farmers out of farming, leaving them to be cannibalized. By selling or leasing to larger farmers who need to expand to capitalize on the technologies they are buying. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 32 the expansion of Europeans throughout the world since the beginning of the modern period, certainly, whether for commerce, war, or colonization, has seldom been constrained by the perception that this or that fruit is inaccessible. Indeed what we see is perhaps a different species of irrationality altogether, not one wherein existing desires are diminished in view of limitations, but rather wherein limitations are overcome for the purpose of creating new desires. This is, in sum, the argument of many historians of exploration and trade, notably Sidney Mintz, in his influential 1985 work Sweetness and Power, The Place of Sugar in Modern History. Sidney Mintz 1985 Sweetness and Power, The Place of Sugar in Modern History. Early modern globalization was not, as we might imagine, driven by a desperate need among Europeans to go out and find absolutely essential goods of which there had previously been a short supply. Rather, it was driven in no small part by a search for luxury goods, 
spices, silk, coffee, tobacco, sugar, and many other commodities Europeans naturally did not know they needed until they knew they existed. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 33 In 1948, Burhus F. Skinner ran a groundbreaking, but also hilarious, behavioral psychology experiment known as the Superstitious Pigeon Experiment. 1948, Burhus F. Skinner He put hungry pigeons in a cage and taught them that if they clicked a button, their food would be dispensed. Then he took away the button and switched the food to be dispensed automatically every 20 seconds. 20. But these birds had learned that action equaled reward. They didn't realize the reward now happened automatically. Instead, if a bird happened to flap their wings just before the food was dispensed, then they associated that movement with getting the food. Wanting more food, they'd do it again, and eventually more food would drop. They quickly began to believe that repeating that action was causing the food to be delivered. The pigeons in the experiment began to display all sorts of odd, ritualistic behavior spinning in circles, swinging their heads back and forth, bobbing up and down and would repeat these behaviors incessantly, never making the connection that the treat came automatically, even if they did nothing at all. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 34 The prototype of automatic thinking is the thinking involved when we drive a car. We respond to stimuli not present in the environment for example, the expectation that the light will be red before we get to the intersection. Our thought processes are so automatic that we are usually unaware of them. We steer the car to reach a desired position without being aware that what we are doing is turning the steering wheel a certain amount so that the car will respond as we desire. It is only when we are learning to drive that we are aware of the thought processes involved, and in fact we have really learned to drive only when we cease being aware of them. While much of driving involves motor programs as opposed to mental representations, we nevertheless do think. This thinking is so automatic, however, that we can carry on conversations at the same time, listen to music, or even create prose or music in other parts of our head. When automatic thinking occurs in less mundane areas, it is often termed intuition. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 35 an individual's attachment style is a measure for the quality of his slash her social bonds with others. It is crucially shaped through interactions with caregivers in early life, such as a child's parents. If others close to a child are responsive and caring, the child develops a secure attachment style. If they are unresponsive or inconsistent in their behavior towards the child, however, the child develops an insecure, either avoidant or anxious attachment style. Once acquired, the attachment style of a person is believed to remain rather stable throughout the lifespan, and to even be transmitted from one generation to the next. It is therefore likely to circularly influence many of the steps involved in social brain development and skill acquisition during childhood, adolescence, and even adulthood. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 36 At the risk of sounding provocative, we argue that there is no such thing as mind. It exists only in the sense that, say, Weather exists, weather is a concept used to include rain, wind, humidity, and related phenomena. We talk as if there is a weather when we say things like the weather is interfering with my travel plans. Dot. But no one really thinks that there is a weather. Most, though not all, neuroscientists believe that we should think of the mind in the same way, it is simply the collection of things the brain does, such as thinking, sensing, planning, and feeling. But when we think, sense, plan, and feel, we get the compelling impression that there is a mind behind it all, guiding what we do. Most neuroscientists say this is just an illusion, that the sense of mind is nothing more than the awareness of what the brain is doing. Mind, like weather, is just a concept, it is not a something, it does not do anything. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 37 Each individual deciding to buy or postpone a purchase, or to take up a job or wait for a better one, acts on their own impulses and, it is hoped, uses their powers of reasoning as well. They are unpredictable individually. But collectively the decisions form a pattern. Think of what might happen if physical objects had a mind of their own and acted of their own volition. The apple that fell on Newton's head inspired the theory of gravity. But if an apple had its own volition, it might well have decided not to come down but to go back up to its perch. The subject matter of economics consists of individuals with volition, unlike the subjects of natural science. The economist's hope is that while individual agents may have their own reasons for behaving any way they like, as a group their behavior will show some regularity and predictability. Devices such as the invisible hand are ways of coping with this complexity so that we can grasp its working. 
2024 Chapter 2 Number 38 Global oil prices are possibly the single greatest variable that will influence the demand for American liquefied natural gas, LNG, exports because they impact the gas markets in several ways. LNG For one, gas pricing outside North America is still largely linked to oil pricing, so declining oil prices depress international gas prices. Low oil prices make the costly practice of shale exploration a more risky and less profitable venture. Because of the high cost of drilling, drillers will normally consider the price of drilling a well as a sunk cost. Because that cost is already unrecoverable, the driller may as well produce gas. However, low oil prices may mean losses on incremental costs and therefore losses in profit, which may in turn discourage drillers from producing natural gas at all. Thus, perhaps the biggest threat to the future of U.S. shale production and LNG exports is a period of sustained low oil prices. LNG 2024 Chapter 2 Number 39 When it comes to measuring customer satisfaction, a distinction should be made between object-oriented and incident-oriented inquiry. In cases of object-oriented practices a judgment of satisfaction is composed which is determined by individual quality characteristics such as cleanliness, punctuality, and friendliness. With the help of rating scales, the strengths and weaknesses of the company are then identified. An incident-oriented practice, on the other hand, refers to moments, incidents, in which the customer comes into immediate contact with the service provider. The passenger is questioned in open, personal interviews about context-related episodes and stories such as the experience of buying a ticket or the trip itself. Through these detailed analyses, concrete instances and causes for service deficiencies in individual phases of the service provision process are determined. The operating costs of inquiry and evaluation are, however, accordingly high. Object-oriented inquiries, conversely, are significantly easier to administer due to the possibility of standardization. They also offer the advantage of applying time series to the individual quality characteristics and showing before-after comparisons. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 40 It would be easy to state that in the future most kinds of music will use the technology of our time, they more or less already do. However, it is relevant to make this statement because still today most European art music however we may choose to define it is produced using the technology of somebody else's time. Most art music is still written for string quartets, symphony orchestras and instruments and instrumental combinations created in some time other than ours to fulfill the needs and vision of a different epoch. Even the microphone, this most fundamental and ubiquitous of musical instruments of the early 20th century, yes, musical instrument, is still waiting to be acknowledged by the European serious music world. 2-0. Not to mention the computer. This historical anomaly a practice of rejecting the possibility of working with the technology of one's time is luckily limited to the Western serious music community. The musics of most other cultures, from Indian to jazz, tango to rock, have incorporated or even pioneered technological changes. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 4142 our current medical world is based largely on averages. Not every drug, for example, works for every person, but if it works for even a moderate percentage of people, regulators will often approve it. If you show up in a standard doctor's office with a condition that could be treated with the drug, generally there's a very simple way you find out if it works by trying it. If you take the common blood thinner warfarin and it helps, that proves it is right for your biology. If you are among the one in a hundred people for whom warfarin causes internal bleeding and possibly death, you learn the opposite the hard way. Generalized medicine was our only way to do things when our understanding of how each individual human being works was low. In the coming world of personalized medicine, this approach will seem the equivalent of leeches. Instead of just seeing a doctor, you will see a doctor paired with an AI agent. AI Your treatment for diseases from headaches to cancers will be chosen based on how well they work for a person like you. Every person's individual biology including your gender and age, the status of your microbiome, your metabolic indicators, and your genes will be the foundation of your medical record and care. 2024 Chapter 2 Number 4345 Ryan toddled around the corner and into the living room, where he stopped cold. Ryan. His little mouth dropped open, and the light in Ryan's eyes rivaled the glow of the lights on the Christmas tree. Ryan. What he saw there were two big shiny toy trucks. One was a trailer truck and the other was a fire truck with a ladder. There were other packages, too. But those would have to wait. 
he only had eyes for the two toy trucks. I looked at my husband, Mike. Mike. He was looking at his son. I couldn't tell whose eyes were brighter. Those are for you, Ryan, Mike said. Ryan. Mike. That was all the encouragement he needed. Ryan climbed on the toy fire truck and rode three laps around the living room. Ryan. Then he hopped off and lay down on his belly, pushing the toy trailer truck and making engine noises. He's such a boy, I said to Mike, who was already down on the floor with Ryan. Dot. Ryan Mike. I wasn't sure which of the two of them had more fun. Eventually, we had to remind Ryan that he had other presents to open. Ryan. With each present, Ryan seemed happy and excited. Ryan. What he really wanted, though, was just to play with his trucks. But there was something unusual about those toy trucks that he didn't notice. The company that makes the toy trucks is famous for using standard colors on its toys, mostly school bus yellow. However, Ryan's toy trailer truck was navy blue, and his fire truck was wine-colored with a silver ladder. Ryan. As a matter of fact, Ryan's toy trucks were not like the ones currently available in the store at all. Ryan. They were the good old hard metal ones, and Mike used to play with them when he was a child. Mike. For about a month, Mike had spent most of his time after work in the garage, cleaning, repairing, and sanding those trucks to make them as good as new. Mike. Then he had repainted them. Now he was getting the payoff for his labor of love. Ryan was in a kid heaven. Ryan. 2024 Chapter. 3 Number. 18. Dear Pet Owner. Petswell is committed to the development of animal health care products that can help your pet enjoy a longer, healthier life. Pets swell. In order for our commitment not to be wasted, we believe that veterinarians must be central to pet health and care. Based on that belief, our policy is to sell our medications for pets exclusively to licensed veterinarians. We do not sell our medications for pets to retail outlets, pet supply stores, or any internet site. We do not know how our products reach these businesses so we can't ensure that proper handling occurs and thus we will not provide any guarantee for the products. Therefore, I encourage you not to purchase our products through unauthorized sources. We wish your pet good health. Sincerest regards, Steve Lee Vice President Petswell. Petswell Steve Lee. 2024 Chapter. 3 Number. 19. Anna hoped that there were not any snakes in this high grass, because she couldn't even see her feet let alone a snake crawling along its way. Anna. Suddenly, something wrapped itself around Anna's ankle. Anna. She jumped so high that she could actually see the river just a few feet in front of her, but the river was not her concern just now. Her heart was pounding a hundred miles an hour as she reached down and pulled the beast off her leg. One zero zero. When her hand came out of the long grass so she could see what it was, she gave a huge sigh and said out loud, Oh, thank goodness. It was just some of the long grass that had become caught in her shoe and had wrapped itself around her tiny leg. Freed from the fright and the potential monster and now knowing where the river was, Anna ran as fast as the tall grass would allow toward the clean, clear water. Anna. 2024 Chapter. 3 Number. 20. One great example of having to influence someone is the interview process. At each stage during the interview process you need to influence someone. First you need your application to be considered and reviewed. You need to be invited to the interview and then, at this point, it really is down to you to do your best to influence the decision makers to make them feel like you are the best person for the job. If you don't, someone else will. I often hear of people who feel like they've missed out on a dream job, but when I ask them about their preparation or what stories they told in their interview, they often didn't prepare well enough or were too shy to tell the stories of their strengths and successes because they felt they would appear to be arrogant or boastful. But an interview process is exactly the time to influence those people and be proud of your achievements, because if you don't tell them, how will they ever know? 2024 Chapter 3 Number 21 We overpay to get something off the ground, and later, when we find out that the idea really isn't very good, we ignore that truth and continue to scale because of cost bias we don't want to admit we have just invested in a loser. Throwing good money at a bad endeavor, however, doesn't make a problem go away. It just compounds your losses. When you find yourself in such situations, the only time you should be comfortable being the highest bidder is if you have the secret sauce for making that idea great, 
or what economists call a comparative advantage. This could come in the form of a patented technology that is necessary to scale an idea, ownership of a key resource necessary to operate at scale, or even personal expertise. That will allow you to scale up that idea more quickly than competitors. Only then can you skirt the winner's curse, because you are winning by winning. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 22 It's important to observe our behavior at home or outside and be conscious of ways in which we might react to a wasp, say, or a spider. Obviously wasps can be annoying and no one wants a wasp to sting their child, but they are not the enemy. If a child's first experience of a spider or moth is a parent wanting to swat and kill it as quickly as possible, it's not exactly going to sell spiders or moths to the child as other beings to respect or protect. We are the greatest influences on our children and if we communicate unwarranted, mindless fear and disgust for insects, for example, it's likely to limit the child's growing interest. How we talk about other creatures matters. A relationship of love and kinship with nature is cultivated by the way we consider and perceive other species. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 23 What does it mean to transform something into a commodity? At its most basic level, it involves producing things not only for use but also for exchange. With the development of capitalism, this involved exchange in markets increasingly extended over time and space, with money as the medium allowing for such extended exchange. This was crucially linked to systems of consumption and production. Production for extended exchange required the investment of capital and paying wages for labor. When commodities were bought, this involved private and exclusive ownership rather than collective access. When feudalism gave way to capitalism, many things became commodified land and labor among them. John Fro notes that even if we rightly resist the teleological notion of capitalism as necessarily involving endless commodification, for there has been some decom modification, too, such as the sentimentalization of love and the abolition of slavery, capitalism can nevertheless be understood as a system involving a continual, if uneven, extension of commodification. John Fro. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 24 We experience whether the state of the atmosphere at any given moment in time through changes in temperature, humidity, rainfall, cloudiness, and wind. Although weather may change from moment to moment, Weather events such as storms may last from several hours to several days. Specific locations around the world tend to experience relatively unique weather patterns based on features of latitude, nearness to large water bodies, and unique terrain, e.g., mountains. Collectively these features and the general circulation of the Earth's atmosphere and oceans shape a location's climate. Climate can be defined as the long-term average weather patterns for a specific region. Robert Heinlein stated, climate is what on an average we may expect weather is what we actually get. Robert Heinlein, dot. J. Marshall Shepard, former president of the American Meteorological Society, similarly stated, weather is your mood and climate is your personality. American Meteorological Society J. Marshall Shepard, dot. A more precise, operational climate definition is the average weather conditions over 30 years. 30. 2024 Chapter. 3 Number. 26. Vincent Bendix was born on August 12, 1881, in Mullen, Illinois. Vincent Bendix 1881812 Mullen. When he was young, Bendix and his family moved to Chicago. Bendix. He displayed an early aptitude for mechanical thinking by designing a chainless bicycle at age 13. 1 3. At age 16, he ran away to New York City. 1 6. For the next three years he worked variously as an elevator operator, law clerk, and mechanics assistant while studying engineering at night school. 3. Between 1901 and 1907 he designed and built motorcycles for Glenn Hammond Curtis, a small engine manufacturer. 1901-1907 Glenn Hammond Curtis. In 1907 he returned to Chicago to sell cars for Holmesman Automobile Company. 1907 Holmesman Automobile Company. That same year, he designed and built an automobile known as the Bendix Motor Buggy, then organized the Bendix Company to manufacture it. Bendix Motor Buggy, Bendix Company Even though the business was started during the 1907 economic depression, his company sold 7,000 Bendix autos. 1907, 7,000 Bendix In 1910, he patented the Bendix Electric Starter, an improvement to the hand crank starters of the time. 1910, Bendix before long, the Bendix starter became a standard in all cars produced in the United States. 
Appendix 2024 Chapter 3 Number 29 Online activities sometimes afford too many opportunities for spontaneous attention. Rather than restoring our capacity to concentrate deeply, they drain it by using up our attentional reserves. While spending so much time online, we avoid or postpone more difficult tasks requiring our attention. Linda Stone describes the perpetual scanning of cyberspace and social media as continuous partial attention. Linda Stone This online multitasking fragments our attention and creates a sea of distraction, making us more vulnerable to inattentional blindness where we fail to perceive important details and events in our immediate surroundings. In the aggregate, these cyber influences on individuals' cognition may be creating an attention-deficient culture. Strategies that may counter the adverse effects of online multitasking and continuous partial attention are educational programs that train children and adults to conserve attentional resources and allocate more time for face-to-face -face conversation and reading books, and family or workplace norms that encourage people to take regular breaks from email and go offline for extended periods to escape the onslaught of digital information. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 30. Often, ethics and law are seen as being clearly distinct from each other, sometimes even as opposites, in the sense, for example, that ethics starts where the law ends. Persons or companies would then have legal duties and ethical duties, which have little relationship with each other. However, such a view can be challenged, in several ways. First, legal rules often have an ethical side, too. For example, legal norms that make environmental pollution illegal still remain ethical norms, too. Much of the legal framework of a society, like antitrust laws, has a great ethical importance for a society. Second, ethics can, and has, to some extent become a kind of soft law in the sense that companies need to follow certain ethical standards even if the law in a particular country does not strictly require it. For fear of damaging their reputation, or decreasing the value of their stock, for example, companies are, in many cases, adhering to ethical rules which for them have nearly the same consequences and impact as legal rules, hard law. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 31 We can distinguish between weak, also called narrow, AI and strong AI. AI AI. Weak AI refers to applications that are capable of executing a single, particular task within a narrow domain in a way that equals or exceeds human capabilities. AI. This goal has been reached in games such as chess, and to some extent in, much hyped, speech and facial recognition. AI. Context specificity is an important feature of narrow AI, as even small changes to context and task specifications prevent the AI system from retaining its level of intelligence. AI, AI. This is because of the way much of narrow, weak, AI, which is typically based on variations of machine learning algorithms, learns, rather than being able to learn across problems the way humans do, machine learning algorithms tend to have to start again from scratch. AI. This failure to generalize makes algorithms inherently unstable. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 32. Like a discomforting wind. Worries about decreasing public trust in governments spread over the Western world in the last decades of the 20th century. 2-0 From the 1950s to the 1990s, a change in attitude was notable. 1-950-1990 Symptoms included declining voter participation, an increase in protest voting, declining numbers of memberships in political parties, even a lack of confidence in democracy itself. Even in the Nordic countries, Characterized by fairly stable and low-conflict welfare state models with considerably low transaction costs, us influenced protest movements spread during the late 1960s. 1960. Throughout the 1970s an international oil and financial crisis caused unrest in the Western world. 1970. Cases may have varied from state to state, but for the first time in the post-war era citizens may well have been under the impression that governments did not have everything under control. This was also true concerning the hospital sector in Norway, where increasing costs seemed difficult to halt. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 33 Fashion is a way of communicating ideas, values, and aspirations through clothes. Through our clothing, we announce who we are, what we care about, and where we belong or aspire to belong in society. Sometimes the message is obvious and direct, like the way an officer's uniform conveys authority, other times more inchoate and figurative, like the way a punk rock girl's denim jacket covered with patches and pins conveys rebellious swagger. Less obviously, but perhaps more importantly, 
fashion is a means of transforming our sense of self and our sense of our place in society what I will call, borrowing from the historian Stephen Greenblatt, self-fashioning. Stephen Greenblatt Clothing can also change our self-perception and affect our learning, development, and sense of possibility. In a sense, we become what we dress for, our clothing trains us to occupy a social role giving us confidence or weakening our courage, straightening our posture or forcing us to slouch, offering a sense of physical comfort and support or constraint and irritation. In this respect, in contradiction to the old saying, clothes actually do make the man. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 34 Would you believe that we exercise more self-control in a well-lit room than in a room with dim lighting? An interesting study led by Professor Anna Stiedel from the University of Applied Sciences Ludwigsburg, Germany, showed just that. Ludwigsburg Anna Stiedel Based on a series of experiments, the researchers found that light and brightness influenced the participants' self-awareness and self-control. In one of Stiedel's team's experiments, participants were exposed to various intensities of brightness and were asked to complete a questionnaire that measured public self-awareness, e.g., right now I am concerned about what other people think of me private self-awareness, e.g., right now I am conscious of my inner feelings, and awareness of the immediate surroundings, e.g., right now I am keenly aware of everything in my environment. Steedle, dot, dot, dot. Participants who sat in a well-lit room reported a higher rate of public self-awareness than those who sat in a dimly lit room, whereas no difference was found in their awareness of their inner feelings or the environment. Thus, it seems that bright light makes us more concerned about the impression we make on others. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 35 Tracing the history of red sauce is made difficult in part because Italian cooking traditions lack the formality of cuisines like those coming from French kitchens. The same recipe prepared by different cooks will vary widely in preparation and ingredients, and even the same recipe prepared by the same chef may vary, too. This style contrasts with French cuisine, with its standard methods and narrowly defined preparations, with precise recipes any French chef can assemble in the same way with the same result. The informality of Italian cooking allows cooks to easily adapt to available ingredients, weather, climate, and the immediacy of the situation. This quality allowed Italian Americans to alter their cooking traditions to adapt to the ingredients and plentitude of the United States. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 36 Culture has been defined in many different ways since the first anthropological definitions were published in the 1860s, but at the heart of the concept is the idea that culture is learned. 1860 People learn culture by observing and interacting with other people, in this process, they construct shared systems of meaning and shared norms of behavior. Debates about whether or not animals have culture depend on how culture is defined. Some have argued that culture distinguishes humans from animals they tend to focus on definitions of culture as complex systems of meaning. Others have argued that some animals do have culture, they tend to define culture as shared behaviors acquired through social learning. This broader definition of culture allows scholars to address interesting questions about the different kinds of culture across species, the role culture plays in helping different species adapt to the environment, and the evolution of culture across species in combination with genetic evolution. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 37. The modern picture of biological evolution is one in which natural selection tends to operate more effectively at the level of individuals than at the level of groups or species. Competition among individuals thus seems to be the key to understanding many aspects of how organisms are designed. In this view of the living world, conflict seems very natural, and it is easy to understand, for example, why animals fight, why plants overshadow each other in the struggle for light, and why microorganisms engage in chemical warfare. Cooperation, however, appears as a phenomenon that requires subtle explanation. Such a need for sophistication was recognized early on by some evolutionary biologists who based their theories of cooperation on genetic relatedness, kin selection, and on the logic of repeated interaction, reciprocal altruism. Kin selection theory has had many successful applications and is now widely accepted in biology and increasingly in the social sciences. Yet, in its original form it does not explain cooperation between genetically unrelated individuals or between members of different species, symbiosis, mutualism. The theory of cooperation, therefore, needs to be developed far beyond the concept of kin selection. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 38 There are both positive and negative sides of living in groups. On the one hand it gives protection, on the other hand it is harder to hide for predators. 
establishing and keeping a rank order may cause aggressive encounters, and in times when there is not enough to eat the group may have to disperse. In order to keep a group together and avoid aggression, many species have developed complex communicative behavior. Basic communicative needs are for example to find a partner to mate with, take care of the offspring, warn against enemies, announce when and where to travel, and where to go to find food. In order to meet these needs behaviors with highly specialized functions are developed, such as contact calls and alarm calls, signals for dominance, submission, and reconciliation, ways to announce the reproduction status and good food sources. Besides these signals, there is a synchronization of behaviors in many mammals for feeding and vigilance. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 39 A number of studies describe the factors that have led to the increasing distancing of older adults from their children. Underpinning this trend has been changing social attitudes with regard to the need for close geographical proximity between families and also changing attitudes regarding responsibilities for providing care and social support. Indeed, what is commonly known as the loosening of family ties is recognized to have a strong geographical dimension. At the same time, both older people and their children have been shown to be more actively mobile, due to their changed economic circumstances. For example, in comparison with previous generations, the current generation of older people has more money and resources that provide opportunities to relocate, while their children might be more likely to relocate for career purposes. Whatever the reason for increased distancing, however, research identifies decay in immediate interactions and social and caregiving support as distances increase between families. This does not necessarily have to lead to a complete breakdown of communication between families and geographers and others have highlighted the concept and emerging reality of intimacy at a distance. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 40 While in the current political context there is a lot of public attention directed to issues such as freedom, slavery, racism, colonialism, democracy, expertise, power, and climate, often these topics are discussed in a way as if they have little to do with technology and vice versa. AI and robotics are seen as technical subjects, and if a link to politics is made, technology is seen as a tool used for political manipulation or surveillance. AI Usually, the unintended effects remain unaddressed. On the other hand, developers and scientists working in the fields of AI, data science, and robotics are often willing to take ethical issues into account in their work, but are not aware of the complex political and societal problems these issues are connected to, let alone of the sophisticated political philosophical discussions that could be held about the framing and addressing of these problems. AI Moreover, like most people not familiar with systematic thinking about technology and society, they tend to assume the view that technology itself is neutral and that everything depends on the humans developing and using it. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 4142 Our teleological judgment recognizes that there is a distinction between organized beings and artifacts and other natural realities. Kant holds that organized beings, living beings, have intrinsic purposiveness. By this he means that we judge the inner organization of an organized being to be constituted by parts, organs, which are means to the ends of the organism and also means to each other's ends. There is a kind of organization that one does not find in a watch, for example. The inner organs of the organized being are mutually means and ends for each other, whereas this is not the case in a watch. In a body the blood is the means of distributing oxygen to the brain, the brain is the means for keeping the blood supplied with nutrients, through eating, for instance. In a watch, one part may make the other part move but that part is not the productive cause of the other part. The watch does not produce other watches, nor does it produce new parts when old ones malfunction. Even a tree is an organized being for Kant, and hence differs from things. The tree produces itself, maintains itself, reproduces, and its parts are teleological holes in their own right insofar as a branch can be taken from a tree and grafted onto another tree. Organized beings have formative forces, things do not. Organized beings have intrinsic purposiveness, things do not. Again we find an important distinction between animals and plants, and things. 2024 Chapter 3 Number 4345 Leanne glanced through the woods into the late autumn sky. Leanne. Daylight was fading, and a dense chill was settling in the air. It was time to head back. Dakota. She called. Dakota. Max. Max. She searched the forest for a pair of friendly shadows strolling through the bush, but her dogs were nowhere in sight. Again, she called for her dogs. This time they burst out of the trees and they flung themselves on her. 
They rubbed their massive heads against her legs affectionately and she broke into a laugh. Then, as suddenly as they had arrived, the dogs tensed. Pulling away, they stood moving their ears back and forth carefully listening, their noses lifted to the wind. A long, low growl rolled from Dakota's throat and her hackle rose. Dakota. Max froze with his attention trained on a dense patch of bush ahead and his body ready to leap. Max. Leanne could see no sign of danger, but she felt the terror rise deep in her belly. Leanne. Max gave a single, short bark and it happened. Max. In the distance, cracking sounds came from the bush. Suddenly Dakota took off into the bush, flying off in the direction of the sound and Max stayed right on Leanne's feet. Dakota Max Leanne. Leanne was panicked and wanted to call Dakota back but Max wasn't about to let Leanne go. Leanne Dakota Max Leanne. She screamed for Dakota to come back, but she didn't return to Leanne. Dakota Leanne. She was trying to push Max out of the way so she could run after her other dog when suddenly she looked up. Max. She discovered what the dogs already knew, a huge black moose, dangerous and aggressive in the autumn breeding season, was charging down the hill directly toward her. Behind the moose raced Dakota. Dakota. Dakota seemed to know exactly what she was doing, but Leanne was terrified that the moose would aim its hoofs at the dog. Dakota Leanne. She wanted to get Dakota away from the moose, but she couldn't move with the weight of Max against her. Dakota, Max. Dakota was deliberately driving the moose away from Leanne and finally she chased the moose away. Dakota Leanne. The whole time, Leanne was screaming at Max to move aside but he steadfastly ignored her. Leanne Max. Although she'd trained them, they seemed to know that they had to disregard her commands to protect her. 